How was your trip? How are you doing? Good, good, good man, good. Good. How are you doing? My favorite Dawa booth. And your favorite shake, right? And my favorite shake. <laughs> Even though I don't call myself a shake, but I appreciate the compliment. You don't? No, like I'm just position. I'm just a student of knowledge, bro. Student knowledge. Student of talib. I can still call you shake though, right? You can if you like, man. But and I appreciate the compliment. And before we uh, get into our fun discussions today, I just want to say I heard about your kids and I'm praying for them. Oh, thank you. May Allah, the one true Allah, bless your kids with full health and, and, and you know, make everything easy for you. Thank you. Say Ameen, man. Say Ameen. Come on, man. Right? All right. So, since you're here, I caught something interesting. You told me that Ibn Kathir says when in the ayah, جعلنا من الماء كل شيء حيين, right? Which is that we made from water every living thing, right? And you said Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said that this is referring to the the sperm of a man, right? Uh, no, I quoted a site that said that. If right, right. Wrong, so interesting. So, yeah, so, so, so that that that, wrong, that then that's an excellent point. Okay. So this is the actual tafsir Ibn Kathir. Under the actual ayah, mm -hmm. find me that Darul Salam it is. Yes, Darul Salam is a publisher. You know, understand, right? Yeah. It's not a person, right? They publish hundreds and thousands of books, different yeah, muhakkik, no, right? I'm just saying it because I don't have the uh, the uh, green edition. Oh, this is a hardcover. It's ten ten volumes, I think. Uh, I don't use the English, but here. No, I've got I've got one also that's hardcover, but it's red. So anyway, uh, that was all still Darul Salam. Irrelevant. All right. So this is the ayah. And I look through the actual book and I don't find Ibn Abbas Radian making that tafsir. So what that tells me is all these videos you're making at home in front of your camera, you're misquoting things and, and, and poor people that are watching your videos are being misguided because you don't know enough to actually look up the book, right? I mean, unless you can look up the, uh, the tafsir and show it to me here. Okay, this is, you were looking up a Shia. Ibn you, you were quoting Ibn Kathir. You were. Okay, if excellent. That's, if that's incorrect, you excellent. need to take it up with the Muslim websites and say, hey, take this That was Ahlul Bayt's If you can show, right, show, let me, let me. show them that they're incorrect, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Unless excellent. you're saying they're liars, then they should, they should sure. take it down. And then we so let me, let me explain this. Okay. What we're doing here is that you are going online to websites that you're assuming are by Muslims. You but don't know. here. Exactly. So can you admit that Ibn Abbas did not make that tafsir and your accusation was false? No. Why not? Well, I got... <laughs> you, you came here, no. when I showed you the proof, you're not going to admit no, no, it no, then. No. <laughs> if Shias are saying Ibn Abbas said this, sure. you're saying, I don't have any preference one or the other. I know which side you're on. Excellent. So how, do, how would I, how would I distinguish? Sure, I will tell you. Right. Because that website, you don't know who made it. So you are going to a random Googled website. We're, right? And I'm just saying Shia because of the name, right? But whether Shia, Sunni or whoever, people need to bring you the actual evidences. And if you aren't careful enough to check which website, right now you could Google whether the earth is flat or not and some website's going to have some weird arguments. And if you're just going off of that, you are misguiding your viewers. You are giving them information that is actually incorrect, that is not found, right? That's, and for everything, you... Everything. Until I have a reason not to trust someone. Excellent. Right? Like, I so could now, quote this. I could quote, I could quote this yes. to someone, right. and then someone else could come and say, actually, Darul Salam misrepresented that, Excellent. and they distorted it, and it's sure. a bad translation. I got you. And so, if, basically, if we can't study, so the, if we can't the study difference, Islam like this, then the difference, just, the difference is, studied, you know the I mean? difference is, it's not an issue of translation. That quote does not exist in the okay, tafsir of this ayah. So I'll, Excellent. I'll it, but, but can you admit? No. I Why not? I, don't know who to, I, I just know showed you evidence. If a I just Shia, showed you. If, if, no, 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 no. If you, a group you, of Shia scholars says one listen, thing, group of Sunni scholars says one listen, thing. Listen, which group I don't of, know enough okay, to say, oh, the Shias are liars. Excellent. But which Shia scholar said that? They, they've got the, you, you don't know. Got, you just Googled it. You just Googled it. You, who made that no, site? We didn't Google who, that. We use that site all the time. Okay, they've who, got John Lane on there. Who made that site? Who made that site? You don't know. You right. see this? You see this? No He's That's just looking at. So, but but you're using news. websites. You don't even know who made them. You don't know that. I'm showing you the actual book. And you told me I'm your favorite shake. Look, 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 look. So now you've got to listen to your favorite right. shake. Suppose, suppose we go through here and right. Arabic turns. Someone comes up to me and says, sure. actually, they you, totally you see, distorted this. I don't see, know Darul Salam any more than I know. You see the differences? The, the, the difference is 
It's not about mistranslation. It's no, about no, no. the fact. It's Someone, about the fact Salam that that. Make up anything they wanted. Excellent. How would I know until that's? I'm until here to that's help you. Exposed. I'm here to help you. That's why I'm here. Okay. So let me tell you. When I look up books, okay. I, including Ibn Kathir, I actually and I have a video on the best prints and things. I actually look up the handwritten manuscripts, mm -hmm. right? That have been verified and checked, right? Yeah. So when you don't know. For you to make videos sitting in front of your camera at home, making all these accusations, looking up website that I you don't know, here. but before that, right? So, I mean, you had many videos where you talk about these things and you really have did no I, reference. I, use that in the video? I don't know. I don't, I don't watch know a lot of videos. Okay, okay. So, I'll tell you what. If we can go through and find that Ibn, Ibn Abbas in no book that can be attributed authentically talks about that ayah in that way, will you at least admit that you made a false accusation? If we can prove that, yeah, it'd be very simple. You you can you can contact them, ask them sure. where they're getting this. If they don't have it, if they don't have a place, they send you a message back saying, yeah, we screwed up. Then that's done. And then David Wood will admit problem, problem that he solved. made a false accusation, and we're good. I'll admit that I believed a Muslim website. Uh -uh. Shame on you, you, you don't know they're a Muslim. You don't know who made that website, so don't make assumptions. Okay, so right? it's an atheist website. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. So the, the issue is these websites, we don't know who made them. You don't know, and I don't know, and I shouldn't assume, and you shouldn't assume. I don't go online and find some okay. website but called that, Christian that, something dot com and that's assume. True. That's true of everything here. I don't know who that made is this. Not I don't know who made this. Sure. I don't know who made Look, this. I, I don't know who made this. As I told if you. If someone shows me there's something wrong, then you can show me. As I told you, for me, I bring you the actual book, mm -hmm. right? I can bring you manuscript copies. I can bring you scans of the handwritten manuscripts. This is what I do. I do takhreej work. I do checking up those. I do tahqiq work. Farid response, mashallah, he does a lot of this work as well, right? And many other ulema and scholars and tulab and they go and verify all of this. So for you to come and ask us, we would be more than happy, as I am doing, to show you the actual evidences. Mm -hmm. So don't go online and trust any website that you go to. Rather, come and ask. And when you find out that you were wrong, don't be so, don't have so much pride. Be humble enough to be like, my bad. I just looked up some random website that I don't know who made and some Shia reference to it that I never looked at a book or who's the, who's the one that compiled it. And I trusted it and I made assumptions, made a out of me, right? Mm -hmm. When you assume it makes a... <laughs> right? But, you about to say that word. nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, but you know what I'm saying. All right, All right yeah, go ahead, go ahead, bro. All right, I wanted to ask you about this this time. Nice. I have not Can you bring shared chair, this bro? with anyone, but I've seen Ooh. other people sharing it. All right. So I just wanted to ask you real Can quick. Can you bring now, me the chair? My actual question is just about the embryology and how you would translate Excellent. these passages. But, uh, yeah, since, every, since everyone's sharing this. Okay, who's everyone? A bunch of people. Oh, okay. You've seen people Go ahead. This. Muslims like who don't like you and Christians who. who Man, don't there like are you. Muslims that don't like me? There are some. Very weird. So, my main question was just is that Photoshop? Excellent. Is that Excellent. Photo, is okay, that so let me explain it to you. Okay. First off, uh, you want me to read it to her? I mean, just tell you about it. Go ahead. So, someone named Mansoor. Maliki, mm -hmm. who doesn't seem to like you, or me, he doesn't like me, oh, okay. well, said so to be absolutely, he's talking to you, he says so to be absolutely clear, you agree that jizya should be imposed on all disbelievers, mm -hmm. and if they refuse, they should be fought and their women and children enslaved. Sure. And you replied, at least according to this, sure, and I don't know, Photoshop, you could, you, you could post, I got you, go ahead. You could post them, I mean, you could ask me, David, do you like mashed potatoes I say yes and then you could switch the question to happened David, all the time you torture puppies or something like that right? you torture puppies no See? <laughs> I'm glad you don't shot, right I agree so he asked um, do you agree that jizya should be imposed on all disbelievers and if they refuse uh, they should be fought and their women and children enslaved the response here is of course and I have already made all of this clear in my durus but you never reached out to ask me so Excellent. the relevant relevant questions would be is that photoshopped or something or is there something else in the discussion that would i got you clarify that this Did is on mind? saw this a while back did not share it with one person because i was like I, I know i'll be talking to you so i might as well i like first. it okay. good first thing um th there has been a clarification posted on twitter i had given up all my social media right which i did not respond to that personally you're not on social media i am not on social media even the the, the twitter post that you're looking at uh -huh. if you go to the actual twitter page there's a post on there that clarifies that i I'm not the one who runs the Twitter page, right? I created that Twitter page originally as Abu Kutub. 
just to explain books. Right? What I used to talk about is this is the book, this is the best manuscript, this is the best tahqiq, this is the best print, this is, uh, you know, this is what's coming up, this is the benefits. When the, the, the traffic picked up so much that I couldn't keep up, I gave it up, right? And there was a post posted on Twitter to clarify that, okay? So that tweet was not from me personally, it was from my Twitter account. Right? And there were other things done on that Twitter account, like some tweets which I did not agree with. And we made that clarification on Twitter. Right? So we're clear about that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to talk about Jizya, I'd be more than happy to discuss it with you. Uh, yeah, sure. So, sure. so wait a second. So, Go ahead. someone who works for you and controlled this Twitter Does not account. not work for me. Somebody who volunteered to take care of the Twitter account, made that post, and as I disapproved of it, he deleted it. Uh -huh. So you just heard it, it got deleted. Yes, and that's why... Do not, so, just to be clear, Yes. because I want it clear. Good, good, people, I, I like people clarity. People are sharing this, right? I know, yeah. And uh, I think... And we've already made it clear, but the haters going to hate, right? What you're yeah. going to do? Well, I mean, keep in mind, because I found this from experience, too. Uh, you know, you can say something about me and I can post a response. It doesn't mean everyone pays attention to my response, right? Just like someone can can come after you. Sure. Not ever not all the person's followers might are gonna see your response. You know what I mean? Well I appreciate so, you making this clarification yeah. for me. Okay. So just to be clear, you do not believe that jizya should be imposed on all disbelievers, and if they refuse, they should be fought, and their women and children enslaved. No. Right? Okay. But there are ahkam and places where jizya is implemented. Not all disbelievers. For example, when you have, uh, I'll give, just give you a short example, right? For example, if you have uh, ahlul dhimma that don't have the protection that's been given, there is no jizya on them, right? If there are ahlul dhimma that are not living under your sharia, there is no jizya on them, right? So that cannot be blanketly used in that sense. Okay. That is has that, been, has that been explained to Mansoor Maliki? Uh, I don't know who Mansoor Maliki is, and if he wants, like, uh, he can come and ask me directly. He didn't, so that means that somebody who's just out there trying to cause... He didn't like either one of us. He said, okay. when he posted this, he said, Uthman Farouk is actually a pathological liar. When, will, uh, when with Christians, he'll deny things like offensive, offensive jihad and slavery, but when Muslims... When with Muslims, he'll affirm it. Him and David Wood are both vile. Ah. So we don't ah. like either one of them. So, so let me, let me, wait, wait, hold on, let me, let me. Replied, pay yeah. attention. Pay attention. Mansour. Let me, Mansour is a troll. Nobody cares who he is. is he, but he's, he's, he's I, I have no idea. It's probably some atheist out there trying to be a troll. I don't know. Don't care Not either. Trolling. Now, but just a clarification of that as well. I have never denied that there is anything called offensive jihad, right? I, I, that's a lie from him, and if he can bring evidence, I'd be more than happy to see it, right? Mm -hmm. I have never changed my views in front of Christians and Muslims. Everything I say is recorded. Everything I say in the masjid in front of Muslims is recorded and posted. Everything I say to you is recorded and posted. These are just haters, right? These are people of hasad, and that's why they want to... If this was somebody who wanted good for me or you, Obviously, they would reach out to me and you privately and ask us how we feel. And as we would explain it to him, make that public. But instead, he went and, and even though there was a clarification posted that this was not from me, and that tweet was immediately deleted when I saw it, even then he continued to post it because these are trolls, mm -hmm. right? Islam has rules and regulations for defensive jihad and offensive jihad. There is rules and regulations for Ahlul Dhimma. I have a whole video that I talk about jizya. So for him to say that I changed this, is just his ignorance of, of knowing me, mm -hmm. right? So okay. I'm glad you made that clarification yeah. for me though. Now you offered to explain jizya real quick. Is there, is, there short, is there a short version of it? Sure. Okay, what's jizya in a, okay. in a nutshell? Excellent. So, as a Muslim, we do believe that we have rules and regulations that Allah has ordained upon us, and we do not enforce our religious practices on others. Right? So, we have zakat, for example, right? As a Muslim, living in the Muslim state, we have zakat. Zakat goes into Baytul Mal. You know what Baytul Mal is? Okay. What's that? I'm here to help you, bro. No problem. I'm your, I'm your sheikh, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Muslim government has what is kind of like what you would consider treasury, mm -hmm. right? And in Islamic form of governments, we don't have taxes. So all you libertarians become Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do have is we have zakat that comes in from Muslims. That is a religious obligation. And that goes into Baytul Mal. And there are certain categories of people and, and projects that that goes towards, which are lined out in the Quran and entire books of fiqh on it. Now, we don't enforce that on non-Muslims, right? Like here in America, for example, you pay 
taxes, I pay taxes, right? Mm -hmm. But as under a Muslim Khilafah, we don't have taxes. How does the government get that revenue? From Muslims, they get it through zakat. If we were to enforce zakat on non-Muslims, then this would be putting a religious obligation of Muslims on them, and we don't want to infringe on their religious rights. So they have jizya. Jizya is only given when they enjoy benefits from the Islamic government, meaning protection, police service, whatever else. Why well, you look confused? You're looking all up in the sky. I'm thinking about something. Thinking, about thinking just think, said. think. You ponder upon it, bro. I got you. <laughs> so jizya is their paying into the Islamic government's functions for the services they receive. For example, in America, you pay taxes, right? Uh -huh. I don't know which state you're in, depending how much taxes you pay, but in California, we pay a lot of taxes, right? Uh -huh. But the government says, hey, you pay your taxes, we give you police service, we give you roads, we give you the military, we give you these protections, right? Now, as a non-Muslim living under a Muslim rule, you will get those benefits, and as you get those benefits, you will pay into the system. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if we didn't, then it would be a, a hardship that would be borne only by the Muslims who would be paying zakat, and non-Muslims would not be paying anything to the government's functions. Mm -hmm. right? If, and as it has been during times of Islamic history, that those uh, functions are not delivered, jizya is not taken. There have been times, like during the time of Umar al-Khattab, where jizya was returned. Right? So this is their taxes that they pay into the services they receive which I think you would think is fair. Uh, yeah, well, I see the, you the, nodding. The, the, re the reason I was, I was the, uh, the, the reason, go ahead. a little inquisitive there, so I was thinking, um, so Muhammad said, my livelihood, is, my livelihood is under the shade of my spear, and he who disobeys my orders will be humiliated by paying jizya. Excellent. And so he describes it a, as, wait, hold, as humiliation. So Let, Muhammad describes it as I, humiliation. One second, I just wanted to quote take your time. Take your time. Kathir on, on, this, on the, uh, the same issue. So Ibn Kathir which, which, which eye are we looking at? Uh, this would be on 929. Paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. Allah said, until they pay the jizya, if they do not choose to embrace Islam with willing submission, in defeat and subservience, they feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated, and belittled. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhimma or elevate them above Muslims, for they are miserable, disgraced, and humiliated. Sure. Muslim recorded from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Do not initiate the Salam to the Jews and Christians, and if you meet any of them in a road, force them to its narrowest alley. Sure. And then he goes on to, I know the Pact of Umar is, is uh, disputed as far as whether that was actually from Umar, uh, I think so. But he goes which on way, to quote Which pact, pact are we talking Umar. about? The one where he gives the conditions of... Uh, for the Dimi contract. Okay. Yeah. So, so, okay. So, the, the, you're mentioning a lot of things, and you're kind of going forward instead of addressing well, the, them. Yeah, the, so, the, so let's the, let's the go back issue, to the, the only issue there gotcha. was Take you're it portraying in. it as, uh -huh. hey, it's just payment for services, Where which is they're true. Describing it as you're sure. humiliated, you're disgraced, sure. you're belittled. If you see a I, Christian or a Jew, shove them there, shove that, them down this alley. That's got nothing to do with jizya itself, but we'll, we'll talk about that as well. First thing, can I look at the hadith now? That you're trying to so uh, frequently try to get over. <laughs> Him and his famous websites, man. You gotta buy yourself some books. This is bro. directly from the Darul <laughs> Salam you. edition. Excellent, of, excellent. Of <laughs> Which you're looking up where? The, 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 this is not from Darul Salam. That's a lie. The, oh, 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 hold on, hold on. This here is. Not Dar es Salaam's Ibn Kathir. Guarantee you. Ibn no, Kathir. No, no, that's not Ibn Kathir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's Sahih al-Bukhari. So, okay, excellent. Bukhari. Okay, so yeah. let's clarify that because you were pointing at the Ibn Kathir, right? So yeah, yeah, let's... when I quoted Ibn Kathir, I quoted Muhammad. Gotcha, first. gotcha. So now let's look at the hadith. Ju'ila rizqi taht al dil. Right. So this is what you are saying that Allah subhanahu wa taala put the risk of Rasulullah under the, the swords, right? Now, you know about hummus, I'm assuming. No, what's that? Oh, man. Nice. All right, so well, I'm glad you can translate so the words. that's Muhammad's livelihood. I, I, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, right? Uh, and, and see, you, you've, you've cut this for some reason, so we don't have that. Because that's the quotation. That okay, but, 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 there, but there's a reference here with the one there, which we don't know what it says because you cut it. Look it up. Okay, cool. Um, so the livelihood of Rasulullah is what's called the khumas. This doesn't come from jizya. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's the first thing you misunderstood the hadith, right? Um, this is why we have al wow here to show the, a different subject that's coming up. Okay, the livelihood of Rasulullah does not come from ghanima, it does not come from zakat, it does not come from sadaqah, it comes from what's called the khumus. The khumus would be that if there is a battle from the spoils of the war itself, not the jizya later, from the spoils of the war, you would take one fifth of that to be given to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so he could then spend it upon the people and upon his expenses and so on. Right? So you misunderstood the hadith first off by thinking this is talking about jizya, right? Secondly, it does say jizya. I, I know, but, but I, didn't, I didn't believe the first part was about jizya. The second part. Okay. I, no, you said the livelihood of Rasulullah comes from jizya, which is on tape. No, 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 no. no I you, you didn't say that. I'm glad we got it on my tape. My livelihood is under the shade of my spear, and right? he who disobeys my right. orders will be humiliated by paying. Jizya. Excellent. The, the, th the thing was, you're portraying jizya as, hey, you know, this is this it happy is. fun money to take it, care of you. I didn't say happy he says fun money. Humiliated by paying jizya. Excellent. That's what I was asking about. Sure. Let me explain it, bro. Take it easy. First thing that you need to clarify for your audience mm -hmm. is the livelihood of Rasulullah Sallam does not come from jizya. Are we clear on that? Now you look confused. You just said you didn't say that, but it's all right. We got you, bro. That's what we're here for. Okay. So the livelihood of Rasulullah. So this is the problem with people who don't have enough knowledge to look up references. They take one hadith or one ayah and then they think they know. But I'm glad you're here because we're here to teach you. Mm -hmm. We're here to wash your misconceptions out. So the livelihood of Rasulullah comes from what's called khumus, right? That's why you have books like Fath al-Bari. Books like the hadith are not studied in silos, right? This is when you look at all the majmu al ahadith and you look at it right this and the wow is not to show regarding livelihood this is in talking about those that disobey the Prophet ﷺ after the battles right because jizya is only on those that are there now as I said if Muslims and we'll look at Ibn Kathir in a second now right if Muslims were paying zakat right and the non-Muslims were not paying anything right would you agree that that would not be fair in, in, a, in a situation where people are, are benefiting from the arrangement. Right, and we already mentioned that, right? So if you are under protection of the Islamic State, right? The defense, police, roads, all those services are being given. Muslims are paying zakat, okay? Non-Muslims are not paying anything. Would you consider that fair? None of that is the point. The point, no, the point it, is, it, it is the point. Jizya is the humiliation. It, it, it is the point. Jizya is the humiliation. It is the point if you would listen. Okay. Right? So you want to jump because you know it's going to become clear, but I'm not going to let you jump. You're going to be in your place, son. So here, you, I'm asking you a question. In the Islamic Khilafah, you have Muslims and non-Muslims. You got Muslims paying zakat. Zakat is going to Baytul Mal, which you didn't look up any of those ahadith because you didn't really want to learn. You just wanted to make this video, but I got you. No need, right? to, Hold no on. need to keep no, insulting. No, no, no. no I'm not insulting. That's not, that's not an insult. That is not an insult. Right? That is letting you know what you did and how we're going to clarify it, right? So, if you look at the ahadith about zakat, for example, which you didn't look up that bab for some reason, right? Because then you would see that the Muslim, is, does, he humbles himself, right? Willingly, right? By paying zakat, right or wrong, right? So when you pay zakat, and that money goes into the system, mm -hmm. and then from Yatam and Masakin and even non-Muslims like, that you know you, you can give zakat to as you look at the conditions given in the Quran, and a non-Muslim living there in that society is not paying any of that. Would you find that to be fair? No, you should uh, you should be required to. Excellent, again, excellent, excellent. Issue, excellent. It's, it's, it is it's, the issue. It's the it is the issue. If you you can, would say that Muslims are humiliated by paying. I I, I would say that we are humbled. But willing, I'm explaining. There's a difference, right? If if I pay taxes willingly, right, then I am humbled by having to pay taxes. If I choose not to, and the government forces me to pay taxes, I am humiliated by them forcefully taking it from me. Correct? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I got you. So when you're living in a Muslim khilafah, and the Muslim pays zakat willingly. Right? Mm -hmm. They humble themselves. If not, and this is where you're missing, right? In the time of Umar, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when the Muslims stopped paying zakat, do you know about this? Ah, oh, son. You don't watch my videos, huh? Wait, 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 wait. You don't watch Why my videos. Huh? In the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Oh, okay, yeah, when there, when there was the, 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 uh, the apostasy wars. So there was the Ridha wars against yeah. Musaylim al Kadhab, but they, that was yeah. a different issue. They refused but to pay zakat, and no, 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 Abu so. Bakr said, if they refuse to give me even a, a rope that they used to be Excellent, Muhammad, excellent. We will humiliate them. 
by taking it from them. Right? Mm -hmm. Even though those were people who made salah, who prayed, who said they were Muslim. So what is the humiliation is they were forced then because they weren't willingly giving it, right? So here in the hadith, it clarifies that as well. As a Muslim, I'm not humiliated with zakat because I pay zakat willingly. If I do not, then the Khilafah will force me and humiliate me by forcefully taking the zakat because that is the haq, that is the right of the poor. But Ahlul Dhimma, that would not be paying, then they would be forced to pay the jizya because it would not be fair as you have already agreed. So that is a humiliation. So when, when Ibn Kathir says, right, so, so let's get to Ibn Kathir, let me read. He says, paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. All right, so, so can I, what website is this now? Q Tafsir? You and your websites, man. If you had told me, I would have brought Ibn Kathir the actual book, You're the crazy. volumes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but this, this is, this is, this is the same as Darul Salam. This is Darul Salam's print? No, no, no. That's a, I believe it's Yusuf Esti's website. Yusuf Esti says a tafsir site? Okay, anyway. No, no, no. So no, let's go ahead. Okay. That's so, so go ahead. Where were you? Um, it just starts at the beginning. Okay. So paying so, jizya. Uh, until they pay jizya, they do not choose to embrace Islam. With willing submission. So what does this show? Right? What does it say? That if they came with willing... That's just quoting 929. Right, so, so that's what I'm telling you the ayah, right? What is, what, is, uh, what is the meaning here? Allah said, until and yet they pay they. the jizya, right. if they do not choose to embrace Islam, the next line, with willing submission, it, there defi you go. it defines willing submission as in defeat and subservience. Exactly. So what does that mean? If you are not going to be willingly submitting, then you will be defeated and no doubt made subservient. That's a humiliation, is it not? Uh, that's not what that's saying at all. Oh, okay, so can you read? He's maybe, commenting. Maybe, he's commenting. No, 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 no. Read the words okay. instead of giving your interpretation. You're not Ibn Kathir. Okay. Paying jizya is a Heard. sign of kufr and disgrace. Oh, you, you, you skipped it. <laughs> I started at the very beginning. Okay, okay. This, this, this is not from Ibn Kathir. Okay, this is your ignorance again. May Allah give you some knowledge. See, this, this, this is an example because uh, Darul Salam will have me, the exact same thing. It, it, will, it, not, it, it will not. It will not. Here is Darul Salam. Right? What I'm trying to explain to you, these are titles that have been put in that are not in the actual Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Okay? They have them right there. No, Those these, are the titles. So, so that's what I'm trying to... <laughs> this is, if you get Tafsir Ibn Kathir, mm -hmm. Ibn Kathir does not put these in. Okay. okay? These are put in to give you an idea of where you are. Okay. okay? So that's not the words of Ibn Kathir. I have Tafsir Ibn Kathir in many different prints. I have scans of manuscripts. I'm just trying to help you understand. This here is a title put in because the way Ibn Kathir works, it doesn't go ayah by ayah, right? It takes a swap of chapters. So the printers, whoever put this in, they put that in. Here, Allah says is where Ibn Kathir begins with, which is the ayah. When you read the ayah, which you were skipping earlier, is the willing submission part. I never right? skipped it earlier. Okay, let's, let's read it then. Go ahead. Read it from the beginning of the ayah. Allah said, yeah. until they pay the jizya, yes. if they do not choose to embrace Islam. Right? Notice, True. it doesn't... Keep going, if they keep do going. If choose to embrace Islam, right? with willing submission, there you go. in defeat and subservience. Exactly. So he's describing willing submission so? as defeat and subservience. No! <laughs> That's his commentary. Miskeen, That's the Quran. Miskeen. That's the Quran. That's his commentary. Miskeen. You poor soul, I feel bad for you. With willing submission is, is what they should do. And now Ibn Kathir is explaining that when they do not, that means that they will be defeated in defeat and, and submissiveness is then when you talk about the humiliation, when they're subdued because they didn't willingly submit. You didn't understand Ibn Kathir. No, the, Go ahead. Now, now read it the, again. The, the, the verse of the Quran says, willing until submission. they pay the jizya, with willing submission, right. So he's, and feel themselves right. subdued. Right. So that's this, what the Quran says. It doesn't say until they pay the jizya with willing submission, and if me, they thought, then they will feel themselves gotcha. subdued. None let of me that. let me explain it again to you. Right. Okay. So the first option is for them to become Muslim. Okay. Willingly they accept. Right. Mm -hmm. If they do not, then they will pay the jizya. Right. If they are, they, they do not do it in a way of willingness, if they do not willingly accept Islam, they do not accept this, then this is the defeat and submission, the jizya that they will have to be forced to pay. Okay, so that is, and as I explained, in America, for example, if you, David Wood, say, F the IRS, and not that you would use those kind of words, right? I'm not paying my taxes. 
right? Mm -hmm. And then the IRS will say, oh, yes, you are. And we're going to take you to court and we're going to humiliate you. We're going to put you on trial. We'll send you to jail if we have to. We will make you pay those taxes because you're not going to do it willingly. So are you not humiliated? Um, yeah, I'm just Thank you. So that, that is the same. This is saying. Okay. Because notice, I mean, he I've, goes on, he goes on. Right. To, Which is talking about the humiliation from those that do not willingly submit. Go ahead. Wow. Not what this is saying at all. <laughs> this is, uh, wait, so, so let me, let me, let me, let me get this straight. So when he goes on here and he says, so re read the ayah before you go on, <coughs> the part that <coughs> he quotes. And feel themselves subdued. So, so what, what is this tafsir of now? Surah 929. No, no. The, yeah, of them being subdued, he's explaining the, 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 them being subdued. That's the tafsir he's making now. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean to be subdued? Okay. Go ahead. Disgraced, humiliated, and belittled. That, that's therefore, what means to be subdued, right? Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dima. Notice, it doesn't sure. say people of the Dima who rebelled and so on. Right, but, 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 but again, again, again. No, no, wait, wait, wait. wait. Context. Context. Hold on. Context. What you're doing is you're the ayah is talking about those that fought, did not willingly submit, did not become Muslim, and had to be subdued. So that's the Ahlul Dhimma you're talking about. Ahlul Dhimma have different categories, right? Just because he doesn't say clarify because of the context, don't assume he's talking about something else. Ahlul Dhimma, for example, those that are given their harbi, for example, those that were actually fighting you, they are those that are not harbi, that, that were those that supported you. You know about this, right? There's a book, try to get it. It's called Ahkam Ahlul Dhimma Ibn Al Qayyim. Okay? It explains all the differences and things so that you can be more educated with your responses. Go ahead. So, when, when he goes on to say, quotes Muhammad, do not initiate the salam to the Jews sure. and Christians. And if you meet any of them sure. in a row, so, force them to its narrowest sure. alley. You're saying that only applies to rebels, not to just Jews and no, Christians. No, that does general. not. Let, let me explain that hadith now. As you know, that there are times where you can say salam to a non-Muslim. For example, in the Quran, when it says the people of Jahl, ignorance come, qulu salama, right? That hadith, because you don't know context again, is when the Yahud, there were Jews in Medina, that would say, sam alaykum. They would say, may death and, 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 and poison and things be upon you. You know the hadith or you don't? Jews and Christians. I know, but I'm telling you the context of the hadith itself, okay? So, when they used to do this, in a hadith, death be upon you or something yes, like that? Okay. yeah, you know about the hadith or you don't? You know about it? You don't know about yeah, it? Yeah, the one where, where, where they, they, were, they were slurring something, they were slurring exactly. something. Exactly, so, so you do know about it. it, you're just trying to hide it. I got gotcha. you. So Aisha radiyanha, she responded, she said, may death be upon you, and she went off on them. Rasulullah s.a.w. said, alayki bi fahash, it's upon you, don't, don't get, just say wa alaykum. Mm -hmm. Don't initiate the salam, because when you do, then they may respond to you with something that is disgraceful, right? So just tell them wa alaykum. Don't say wa alaykum as salam, don't get, don't get upset. In Tafsir ibn Kathir, for example, or in Fath al-Bari, there are different opinions among scholars. Some of them said, if the dhimmi is such, or a person, that they do not curse you, you are allowed to initiate the salam. Other ulema said, no, because of the fear of that changing things, you should keep the salam for the Muslim. This is a greeting for Muslims, which I agree with, right? And if a non-Muslim does greet you, you say wa alaykum. If you tell me salam alaykum, I will say wa alaykum. If you wish peace for me, I will wish it for you. If you wish death for me, then I'll say wa alaykum. Yeah, you don't. Uh, I just told you the. I just told you the hadith in its full context. Miskeen, right? <laughs> so, like, like you get proven wrong all these times, but, you, but you're just like, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, excellent. Excellent. Well, well, uh, it's, it's not. It's not my version. It is. I didn't make up the hadith for Uthman. You look up the hadith, right? Where Rasulullah said, "Qul wa alaykum." Say. What do you say? Wa alaykum. So even as a dhimmi, even uh, you're not a dhimmi because you're not living in the khalaf anyway, but as a non-Muslim, if you come to me and you say assalamu alaikum with good intent, I will say wa alaikum. If you wish salam for me, I wish salam for you. But if you try to curse me with those words, then I will say wa alaikum and whatever you wish for me will come back to you. What, what about the hadith where Ibn Umar, uh, someone gives him the salam, he says salam, and then he goes away, and then it was told to him, that that was a Jew or something like this, and he comes back and he says, "Give me back my, give me back my greeting." Show it to me. I'll have to look it up. Oh, then look it up and then we look at it. Okay. <laughs>
There you go. All right. Yeah. Uh, because context, you, you, uh, you've already proven that you always take things out of context. Uh, maybe out, out of mistake. I'm not saying about, uh, intentionally. So I want to see the hadith and then we can explain it. Okay. This hadith about saying salam, you can look it up on Islam QA or whatever. That's the website you're familiar with. And it talks about the conditions where you can say wa alaykum as salam and, and which ulema take opinions. And if not, as I said, I have Fath al-Bari, the Sharh of Bukhari by Ibn Hajar. He explains it as well. So you can open your mind. So now, when you talk about jizya, mm -hmm. if you're looking at it just from the perspective of one ayah, one hadith, this is this is where you misunderstand the full concept, right? But when you look at it, from the full context of how it's implemented, right? In an implementation, if you are non-Muslim, living in a Muslim land, enjoying the services provided to you by the Islamic government, right? In response for those services, you pay into the system, right? Me as a Muslim, I pay zakat, you pay jizya. Do you see any problem with that? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you don't. So okay. no problem with jizya. Jazakallah khair. Next. Oh, problem with jizya. Oh, okay. You just said you don't. But I, I just am I'm not seeing any of that in the, the source. But what do you think? Okay. About so so let me let me let me let me hold on. Let me let me explain that to you. Okay. okay. Regarding when you say you're not seeing that, which book of fiqh of jizya have you studied? I'm just, I'm just no, 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 I'm explaining this to you, if, right? If you can't hold understand, on, hold on, if you go to the Quran on, hold on, and you bro. can't understand it, and you go to the commentary, and you can't understand it, and you go to the Hadith, and you can't understand it, it just let seems me, like this is not let me explain able it. to be understood. I, I got you, bro. Okay. When you talk about learning law, you're talking about Islamic law, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? You do not say, as David, that you just pick up one book of law from anywhere and then you will have your own understanding, right? You are not reading a book of implementation of, of, of Jazia, right? You're not, right? What you're doing is you found these verses, not randomly, you found them. Here's a verse. Right, right. But how, how did you get Let to the verse? Ibn Kathir. Wait, how, how did you get to the verse? Reading the Quran. You were just reading the Quran randomly and the ayah came? I have entire Qurans highlighted all the way through. Uh, tell me the truth. Were you just randomly reading the Quran and that ayah came or were you I saw looking this long before I ever actually exactly. read through the entire Quran? Exactly. So what you did is you found a verse that you found that you could use to be problematic and then you look hold on, hold on, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, right? Then you went and looked it up to try to make this attack on Islam. What you should have done is gone to a book that talks about the implementation of Islamic law. And from the Quran and from Sahih Ahadith, they would have brought you the majmu'ah, all of them, to show how jazia works. But you had an intention to take a jab instead of learn. So I'll tell you what, again, we have a book, I'm making an offer here, okay? We have a book called Zadul Mustaqni. It's a fiqh book that brings then the evidences from the Quran and Sahih Ahadith and Akhwal Sahaba and the different Madahib. We are going through it. Right? Watch the videos from the beginning with Tahara, Salah, Siyam. We will go over jizya. We will go over jihad, qital, offensive, defensive, all of that, right? With not just one ayah, but looking at all of the ayat, looking at all of the Ahadith and the scholarly deduction of ulema so you can learn. Okay. Now I am going to prove that everything you just said is complete nonsense. All right, cool. All right, let's hear it. With Ibn Kathir. Mm -hmm. So according to Sheikh Uthman, according to Sheikh Uthman, I like how you're getting all dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get with it. Go, girl. According to Sheikh, I never called this man a girl. Oh, I'm, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying, go, girl. I'm not, I'm not saying you're a girl. All right. right. So. Do not initiate the salam to the Jews and Christians, and if you meet any of them in a road, force them to its narrowest alley. Sheikh Uthman said here in the presence of everyone on video that this is only referring to the people who refused to pay the jizya, and therefore things had to get harsher for them. All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You made a point. Hold on, hold on. First thing, on video you just lied upon me. So let me. I didn't. I told you that hadith about the salam was not in reference to jizya. That hadith, I gave you the full version, but you ignored that, right? Instead, yeah, hold, you, on, you hold, would, on, would, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I told you, I told you with a dhimmi, rare dhimmi, that hadith does not mention dhimmiya. You're saying that I said this is about the dhimmi, and I on video... Ibn Kathir said it's about the dhimmi. No, he didn't. He was explaining to you the context about the relationship with the dhimmiya. He did not say that it has to be with the dhimmi. But you said this is right? about the people who have refused to pay jizya. I did so not. That would, that would be the context. I did not. No, no, no. You're oh, saying bro. that, that oh, 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 commentary... Oh, 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 o
doing here? No, I'm not saying that, Hadith. Let me. No, I explain. This is about people who refuse to pay the jizya, and he quotes it. Then that means he would be in that context. Unless you're saying he's wrong and quoting this out of place. Let me explain this to you a third time. Okay. But if you could actually, right now, this ayah was talking about those that are subdued. Past that. Ibn Kathir is giving you general context, okay. right? Okay. Now, I made it very clear that this hadith was not about a dhimmiyah, but general, and I gave you the reference about the hadith of Aisha yeah. anha, and you ignored that. Fun, no, 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 now, I now, you were now, also applying it. I stand corrected, but he, Ibn Kathir is still going to correct that, you. That, that few minutes of him saying that, that he's going to destroy everything I said, he we stands corrected. All right, get to it, get to it, bro. This is why the leader of the faithful, Umar bin al-Khattab, mm -hmm. may Allah be pleased with him, demanded Excellent. his well-known conditions be met by the Christians. Okay. These conditions that ensured their continued humiliation, degradation, and disgrace. So sure. ongoing humiliation, degradation, and disgrace. The scholars of Hadith narrated from Abd al-Rahman that he said, I recorded for Umar bin al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, in terms of the Treaty of Peace, he conducted with the Christians of Asham. Okay. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, this is a document to the servant of Allah, Umar. This is the document that they were required to have, uh, have for the agreement. This is a document to the servant of Allah, Umar, the leader of the faithful, from the Christians of such and such city. When you Muslims came to us, we requested safety for our ourselves, children, property, and followers of our religion. So they're okay. requesting, they're requesting safety. We made a condition on ourselves that we will neither erect in our areas a monastery, church, or a sanctuary for a monk, nor restore any place of worship that needs restoration, nor use any of them for the purpose of enmity against Muslims. We will not prevent any Muslim from resting in our churches, whether they come by day or night, and we will open the doors of our houses of worship for the wayfarer and passerby. Those Muslims Muslims who come as guests will enjoy boarding and food for three days. We will not allow a spy against Muslims into our churches and homes or hide deceit or betrayal against Muslims. We will not teach our children the Quran. Interesting. We will not teach our children the Quran, publicize practices of shirk, invite anyone to shirk, or prevent any of our fellows from embracing Islam if they choose to do so. We will respect Muslims, move from the places we sit in if they choose to sit in them. We will not imitate their clothing, caps, turbans, sandals, hairstyles, speech, nicknames, and title names, or ride on saddles, hang swords on the shoulders, collect weapons of any kind, or carry these weapons. We will not encrypt our stamps in Arabic or sell liquor. We will have the front of our hair cut, wear our customary clothes wherever we are, wear belts around our waist, refrain from erecting crosses on the outside of our churches and demonstrating them and our books in public in Muslim fairways and markets. We will not sound the bells in our churches except discreetly or raise our voices while reciting our holy books inside our churches in the presence of Muslims, nor raise our voices with prayer at our funerals or light torches in funeral processions in the fairways of Muslims or their markets. We will not bury our dead next to Muslim dead or by servants who are captured by Muslims. We will be guides for Muslims in reform refrain from breaching their privacy in their homes. When I gave this document to Umar, he added, we will not beat any Muslim. These are the conditions that we set against ourselves and followers of our religion in return for safety and protection. If we break any of these promises that we set for your benefit against ourselves, then our dhimma, pro promise of protection, is broken and you are allowed to do with us what you are allowed of people of defiance and rebellion. So, short recap. Ibn Kathir here. Ibn Kathir explains how his well-known conditions that ensured the continued humiliation, degradation, and disgrace were placed on these Christians. These were not Christians, but he goes on to show, these were not Christians who said, we refuse to pay. We well, refuse all of this. He, okay. he said. So let me, uh, let me just, before you. Yeah, uh, they you, came to them and said, we want safety. They, they're saying, we want I safety. Got you. We don't I got you, bro. I we're got willing you. to pay the jizya. And even though they're willing to pay the jizya, uh -huh. all of these conditions, they can't repair a church. They can't do any of that stuff. You, they can't. You know, make their voices loud. You know it's a weak hadith, right? <laughs>
<laughs> Mesquite. Under the bus again. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Under the bus again. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Regarded as reliable. Hold on. Hold on. First thing. He did not say it was reliable. You lied on Ibn no, Kathir no, no, again. No, so, no, no, You're no. You're saying no. Ibn Kathir is, is deliberately quoting hadith he regards did, as did you, did, did you notice how he said ru'ya muhaddithin? Right? That, 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 that's, a, that's the weakness of his understanding. And instead of asking, he wants to come and prove everything I said wrong and then take it back. Let me just explain it. Ibn Kathir is a great book of tafsir. No doubt we have respect for him. But you're great. Uh, no, I am not. Uh, I, 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 no, I, I am not. I'm not. Relax. Got you, bro. I did not even write a book of tafsir, so obviously, I appreciate the compliment, David, but it is not true. Ibn Kathir, I'm a nobody. But there is a great scholar, Abu Saq al Huaini, for example, in Ibn Jawzi's. Are you paying attention, bro? I had a phone here that was not mine. Oh, okay. Right, so, you. All right, stay with me. So, there are books written on the checking of the ahadith of Ibn Kathir. Okay. Ibn Kathir is not Sahih al Bukhari. Right? It is not a book of all authentic narrations. It's a book of tafsir, right? Now, it is a very valued book of tafsir, no doubt to it. But as if you had watched my video about books of tafsir, I had explained even which prints show the weak narrations of Ibn Kathir. Uh, uh-oh, David, what happened? Now, uh, I'm, I'm there, relax, relax, relax. I didn't refute Ibn Kathir. Those great scholars of hadith that went and checked those ahadith, they explained the weakness of those narrations. Ibn Kathir does not say anywhere in his tafsir that I'm only quoting Sahih ahadith. He's giving you contexts. He's giving you what has been narrated and the style, if you had learned of a scholar like Ibn Kathir, when he sees a hadith to be Sahih, he will say it is authentically narrated. Saha an al Nabi alayhi salam, Hisnadul Jayyid. When he knows that there are weakness, he will say it has been reported, as he does here. Ru'ya, and it has been reported by the ulama of hadith. He did not authenticate the narration. If you had come and asked, I can show you the original checking, and I can show you those great scholars of Islam, not me, who showed the weakness in these narrations. There are many ahadith, Ibn Kathir quotes, and then mentions their weak himself, right? Because you have not learned, you assumed things again. Right? So this narration, and again, he says that's weak. He does not say it's weak, but in his style of reporting it, he points out that there is a weakness. That's why he doesn't say Sahih an Nabi. It has been authentic from or Umar bin Khattab. Rather, he says Ru'ya. It has been reported. Right now, if you like to get a Takhrij of Ibn Kathir, and we have many. Then you can go look at the narration, where it's originally from, and the weaknesses in its chain. You're welcome. Not quite. Not because quite? I just said you're welcome. When Ibn Kathir is talking about jizya, okay. at, the beginning of that, at the beginning of that passage. Sure. Well, you, you, you don't understand the hadith of weak. You, you understood that part, right? I'm and you just went on that big tyrant on a weak hadith. I don't care whether, I don't right. care whether it's weak or Just like your Tirmidhi hadith. Ibn Kathir is using it. Well, why? So, why? Because you're saying that what uh -huh. Ibn, all Ibn Kathir is saying mm -hmm. is... This has been reported. That's it. No, no, no. Before that. All okay. Ibn Kathir is saying, according to you, he's just saying that if someone refuses to pay the jizya, then that person will be humiliated and disgraced. Okay, so, so, so no, no, no. let me, let, let what me explain saying, what I'm But then in order, to, ex, in order to give, in order to back up what he's saying, he quotes this passage about sure. Christians who were willingly, willingly entering into this contract, sure. we're forced to be degraded in all kinds of ways. Okay. And if if they if they went against their contract in any way, then they would be treated differently beyond all the disgrace. So, so the only point is here, you can say weak, you can say strong. The context of Ibn Kathir's comments about jizya are in that context. So to, sure. so to claim that he's actually saying something that completely goes against all his background which evidence is, that he's presenting, which is, which is, which is, which is not what very, I said. Very, very let me let me explain this again. Okay. First thing, when Umar ibn Khattab, the same person you're talking about, mm -hmm. when he went into Jerusalem, 
You know the historic reports, right? Yeah. You know there were churches there, right? And they invited him to pray in a church, right? You don't know? Uh, you, you know, David well, does this when he doesn't have an answer. I, love, I, I get your body language. It's cute. Yeah. All right. So when you go to if the, the actual historic authentic narrations, when Umar Radian went to Jerusalem and there were Christians and there were Jews who had their places of worship, mm -hmm. did he not allow them to worship? Sure. He did. Did he, even when they asked him to come pray in the church, he told him, I would, but I'm afraid that Muslims might take this from you as a place of prayer because I prayed there and I want this to remain as your place of prayer. Is that not right? Nothing to do with what we're talking about. It is. I'm not How talking, to, no, it I'm is. Not it is. Uber, it is. It is. So what I'm okay. explaining is, Ibn Kathir, like any other Mufassir, he mentions an ayah and he gives you that which has context, including authentic and including that which is weak. Right? And that is why when we want to study how to implement fiqh, we don't go to Ibn Kathir. Right? We go to books of fiqh because you are stuck on one ayah. There are many ayats, there are many ahadith, and then those books of fiqh look at all of them and they look at the difference and they say, okay, this has been reported from a weak chain. What we know from an authentic chain, this is what Umar Radian did. That's how we bring implementation. But the problem is you don't want to know about how jazia really works. You just want to take jabs. All, <laughs> Go ahead, bro. I got you. All I'm saying, all right. So period was Ibn okay. Kathir couldn't be saying what you were saying. Otherwise, he would not have backed he, it up. No, with that, he, with he, that. he definitely was. And because you don't understand the style no, of no writing, hold on, hold on. Zero percent chance. Ha, have you studied Ibn Kathir? Um, you have not. Commentaries. Studying and reading are not the same thing. I think you should know that, right? Okay. Have you ever studied Ibn Kathir? Look, let, let, let me. Let, we, we, Go we, ahead. Get, we get down to the exact same problem that and keeps sure, coming up over right? and over again. Mm -hmm. Namely, we read the Quran. Okay. Right? We read Surah 9. We get mm -hmm. to 929. Mm -hmm. Fight those who do not believe in Allah. Sure. Hey, that sounds like it's calling on fighting people just because they don't believe in Allah. Sure. You would say no because it really means fighting these particular people and so on, right? Sure. And so you have to go outside of that to even understand what it's saying. Sure. So fight those who do not believe in Allah or the sure. last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger. I got you, bro. No problem. Nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book, so Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Got it. If I'm reading that, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued, that sounds that sounds pretty clear. Right. Fight people until you fight Jews and Christians right. until they pay the jizya. So so if I'm standing here right now and there's all the Christians and Jews, should I just start going attacking them? <laughs> no. No, no, well, why not? No. Why not? Because because what? The, the ayah doesn't mention the process. Where's the process? The, the, Where's the process? Read the ayah. Where's the process? Abrogation's the process. Oh. Oh, now he wants to jump into something else. No. You see no, this? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. See, 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 see your, your, your hypocrisy has just been no, exposed. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And you mentioned you mentioned you mentioned the ayah, uh -huh. and when I told you there are other ayah, there are other ahadith, yeah, you told you told me if I just read the ayah and, and this is but when I asked you the same question, if I just take that ayah as you're reading it, without looking at other ayat, without looking at fiqh, without looking at other hadith, then you would say that just jump out and start attacking these people. And then you were like, no, because there are other ayat. See, this is the hypocrisy. This is why we say you don't just take an ayah and then think you know what it means. We go to the people of knowledge and that's in the Quran. If you don't know, yes, Ahlul Dhikr, go to the people of knowledge. When I did that last time with the Bible, then you were like, no, 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 that interpretation, this, this McCarthy, I don't know McCarthy. This is a hypocrisy, David. Don't be a hypocrite. Be okay, real let, with, let no, me, hold on, let hold on, let me, let me finish this, let me finish. Look, when we look at an ayah of Quran, mm -hmm. no doubt we look at those ayat that are muhkamat, like those ayahs that, that are very evident, right? And there are those that definitely need the aid of tafsir. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that when you don't know, ask those scholars of knowledge. So if you want to know about jizya in reality and you don't just want to make videos, then come, I will mention to you all of the ayat, all of the ahadith, all of the aqwal, what is sahih from da'if, and the concept will be very clear. But if you don't really want to know, you just want to make videos, you will take one ayah, and then you will say, well, this ayah says this to me, and then when I tell you, should I just implement it? You will say, no, 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 there's abrogation, right? So this is an hypocrisy. Don't do that, bro. You want to know about jizya? I'll sit down, I'll explain it to you. All of the ayat, all of the ahadith, 
Tafsir ibn Kathir is a great book, but as I said, no doubt, and I said it the first time and I said it again, and this is not throwing Ibn Kathir under the bus, rather saying that no book of Tafsir is perfect. That's why we look at different books, we look at the Takhrij of Ahadith, and we go to those scholars who specialize in the implementation, the fiqh of it, and then we learn looking at all of the ayat. If you take the ayat by itself, then you would be telling me jump out and start attacking these people and taking jizya from them. But you know that that's not what it's about because there are other ayat just like that. When you talk about jizya, this is one ayat. There are other ayat, there are other ahadith, there are other fiqh from it that then explain the concept. Okay. Now, go ahead. Back to my point. Back to my point. I'll add a little clarification. When we read, fight those who do not believe in Allah. Sure. And it goes on until until they pay the jizya with willing submission, feel themselves subdued. That seems clear as far as the language. Sure. And in terms of qualifications, like oh, it really means people who are fighting you or something like that. Sure. Then it seems like that should be included in. I agree that you do have to consider other verses. Thank but, you. But that's, thank you. But that's been, thank you. But, that's but if you done. if you take this ayah by itself then even what you said would be not clear. Meaning if you just took this ayah out of context, you just took it out True. without looking at historic context, without True. looking at hadith, then you would say jump out and start attacking these people. Mm -hmm. But this is why when you look at jizya and what it's paid for and what are the services received by those who pay jizya, then the context of all of it becomes clear. So if you did but that, that but, as but, well. But, but that is, that's the problem I'm talking about, right? Okay. Okay. So, so we, we open, so we, we read the Quran, right? Okay. And it's not arranged chronologically. Of course not. But you have these verses like 920. 973, 9123, and so on, which call for fighting people because of their beliefs, right? Okay. And you read the context. So you, you read the, the, you know, the verses that come before, the verses that come after, and trying to say, sure. okay, what, what is this? Is there some clarification here or something like that? You also have the greater context of the Quran. Which surah are we talking about? I'm saying but, Surah Ahzab, this right? Apply, this would apply to No, no, I mean, I mean the ayat you're referencing are about Surah Ahzab, right? No, Surah Ahzab. Surah Tawbah is Surah Ahzab. Miskeen. Ahzab, what's Surah 33? 33. So it's called Tawbah and Ahzab. It's called both names, yeah. Surah 33? Yeah, yeah. Surah 33, look. Is the same title as Surah 9? No, no, hold on. Surah Al Ahzab. I've also heard Barat for Surah 9. Surah Tawbah is also regarding the battles, right? We're talking about the battles that happened. Right or wrong, right? I'm just saying. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about, sorry. Um, uh, I will get you the names of them. But okay, so when you look at okay. Surah Tawbah, for example, okay? okay. Surah Tawbah mm -hmm. was in the context of a battle, yes or no? Um, well, if, <laughs> if you go to Ibn Kathir, it's what led up to the battle. Okay, so in context about what happens in the battle, right? Yeah, they, so it's, it's, he, they were calling for battle against the. If you if you read Ibn Kathir's okay. uh, Ibn Kathir's Sira, mm -hmm. he says that command was given, and then a, as a result, Muhammad decided to march out and fight the Romans. Okay. But the Romans didn't even show up. You're talking about Tabuk. Yeah. Okay. So what we're saying is, when you're talking about a surah, uh -huh. you are looking at the context of what it's about. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, you have, so, so if you have a so, verse, right, the first thing is like the immediate context. Verse sure. Come before it sure, sure. and so on. Then well, you have the, the greater context, historic context of the book. Excellent. Right? All right. Um, and then, in addition to that, you have historical context. Now, here, Excellent. Now here's the point, right? Okay. I read the verse, and it's wow. If that means what it sounds like it means. That's that's right. That's, right. that's pretty bad, right? Okay. So. What do we have in the context? Well, the passage runs from 928 to 933 or something like that. Okay. Nothing there that would change the meaning. You have other right. verses in the Quran which talk more about fighting defensively. Mm -hmm. right? You have other passages like that. Um, but when we look at how these are... What, okay, but you did agree that Surah Tawbah is about Surah Ahza, I mean, about the battle of, of uh, uh, the, with the Romans, right? Tabuk. Tabuk, right? Yeah. What happened in Tabuk? Uh, I think the Muslims went to fight and the Romans right. were there. So, but why did the Muslims go to fight? The, well, according to Ibn Kathir, because of that. No, no, no. But, but, according but, to Ibn Kathir, but, okay. here, here's the context according to, listen, according to listen, Ibn listen, Kathir in his Sirah, right? Sure. So, the, in 928, 928 the, comment, the, the, comment, the commentary for that was, the Muslims were worried because Muhammad said that the, the pagans can no longer approach the sacred mosque, right? Okay. And it says that the Quraysh 
became concerned mm -hmm. that this was going to hinder their profits from trade. We're going to we're going to we're, we're not going to be we're not going to be earning the same money. People aren't people aren't allowed to come here anymore. They might not like us anymore. They're worried that this is going to interfere with their their profits from from trade. You're, you're talking about the Quraysh, the that's ones not, that after Fath al Mecca. Yeah, that's after Conquer Mecca. No, no. Okay, so after so, so now they're, 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 they're Muslim. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. They're worried. They're okay. worried. They're worried that this is going to interfere with the profits from trade. So Allah says that He can still enrich them. And okay. then the very next verse, how's Allah going to enrich us? Fight those who don't right. believe in Allah. Oh, okay. Right. But, but hold on. Let me you go let me, through the entire path. Huh? Go through the entire I got passage. You. It's it's we're so, fighting these people to make money off of them. No, that, the that's not true. At the end of it, He says, therefore, Muhammad. All right. So let me let me let me let me explain that to you again. If you had actually look at books of history in Tabuk, there were attacks on Muslims in Sham. You know about this, right? Nope. Uh, I mean, so Let's what can I do for people? Let's so, see all right, so I, I have a video about Tabuk. Okay. okay. I give all your references in it. Books of history, authentication. Watch it, right? I'm interested in that one. Good. Yeah. Uh, send me that link. I'll send you a link. Okay. Right? You didn't give me your number last time. Right? If, you, if you know the title, right. if you know the title, then right, I'll show it to you on your phone today, so then you can watch it. All right. On top of that, you also know that there are authentic reports that there was a Roman army that was being prepared to attack Medina. Right. Mm, no. Yeah, so, no. So this is the problem. Never this 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 is the problem. How this, have I this, never this, seen that one? No, it's this is the problem. Syria, they're this, at war with the Persians. This, no, no, where, where's no, this talking? No, where's no, this so, talking about? Excellent. Where does it say they're excellent, planning to attack excellent. Medina? Excellent. Excellent. So if you like Ibn Kathir so much, okay. get Bidaya wa Nihaya. Hmm? Bidaya wa Nihaya. You never heard of Bidaya wa Nihaya? No. I mentioned it to you last time. So if you were a good student, By the way, you're, 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 my, you're, my students you're not a, on it. You're proving my objection with everything you said. No, no, I'm not. Let me explain it to you, right? Once again, when I looked at the verses from the Bible, mm -hmm. you told me you have to look at context, the old old covenant. I agree. You, you, I agree. Same ex thing with the Quran. Excellent. So, when I look at, for example, here, I'm just going to give you an example, right? Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 11. If two men fight together and the wife of one of them draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of the one attacking him and puts out her hand and seizes him by the genitals, yes, then you shall cut off her hand and your eyes shall not pity her. So if I was to read up and down this verse in this chapter, I do not find any context other than that that's what we should do, right? But then you will tell me this is the old covenant and the new covenant and then this writer said this and this, right? So you will take me to other than the chapter itself and the verses around it to explain it to me, right? But when I do the same for you about Quran, the hypocrisy comes out, right? No. Here, okay, show me here. No. Why can I not do that today? And then, no, show, show it to me here. Do you remember? Okay, Do you remember? Because it's in, a, it's in the Quran. Okay. Where the Quran quotes a Jewish teaching. Surah 5, okay. verse 32. Okay. If anyone kills a man except for certain things. That is not a Jewish if, teaching. If, if, if that is not a Jewish teaching. That, 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 if it's in the Talmud, Talmud teaching, listen, let, me, say, let, me, let me explain it. That is definitely it. a Jewish teaching. Let me, let me explain it. In the rest, can I explain chapter four. Can I explain? Can I explain? Okay. Look, I let you speak. You let me speak. That's the way it works, right? Mm -hmm. When you say that that ruling can be found in Jewish scriptures, I have no problem with that. Okay. But that is a ruling in the Quran. Oh, yeah, oh hold point. on, hold that's on. Let me let me let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish. In the Quran, that is not taken as a Jewish ruling. That is the hukum of Allah that Allah has ordained upon us. Okay, and we believe in that hukum. Right? You trying to run away from answering the verse now have jumped I, to that. I'm willing okay. to answer it. That's part of the that Go ahead. To explain it. Go, Go ahead. ahead. But that was a misquote. That was not that, that's an ayah on the Quran from Allah, not a Jewish teaching. If they have the same teaching, they have the same Allah that revealed even, it to he, them, that's fine. He even, he, but he, he quotes it as for the children of Israel, so obviously they had it. And then we again, up the Talmud and again, there. again, so that, that's what I explained to you earlier that these ayat are applicable for us as well. Okay, no, so, no, 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 go ahead. No, no. Okay, so go ahead. None of that is the point. Reference. The point there was the reasoning for Jews behind that if you've killed a man, it's, if you kill a man, it's as if you killed all mankind. Sure. The rabbis who are commenting on this are saying because you're killing all his future offspring. So they, okay. took, that, they took that very seriously as far as destroying someone's family line. What did that do? So, Woman hmm? and balls. What did that, that Because if your husband and some other dude right. are fighting. Okay. And, and you, you defend to, you your husband. To, yeah, by crushing his testicles. It didn't say crushing, grabbing, but go ahead. You're making up. That's what the. Again, again, uh, it's, it says, okay. see, see, it's again, he's lying in the Bible uh, now. 
Yeah, he's making. Lying. See, no, no, you are lying. Cause you go, listen, 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 listen. Everybody that has a Bible at home. No, no, no. You're you're caught today again, David. Again. No, 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 no. Everybody that has a Bible at home. If you do, no, hold on. Deuteronomy. No, not necessarily. Deuteronomy. 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 Hold on. Deuteronomy. Twenty-five, eleven. Does it say crushing or seizing? If you're you are lying into your you own Bible. Someone, read it. If you reach down and grab someone yeah. by his testicles it mean that, in the middle of a bro, fight. Bro, you, 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 uh, you were in jail. You did some time. You probably kicked some dude in the nuts before. Doesn't mean you can't have kids anymore. This is a very no, harsh... In a fight, like, you're so are you, are you saying this is applicable today? No. Why not? I don't see that in this verse or in this chapter that it's not applicable. What, the, well, you can, if you read over and over again, it said, and these sure. are the regulations for the children of Israel. No, 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 but today, the children of Israel, for example, if you're Jewish, can you implement this as a Christian who's, who's a Jewish by, by race? I would, I would say, I mean, I would say as a Christian, you should not try to destroy someone's family line. So then you would not, would you implement this, yes or no? He's cutting, caught! Cutting off the, <laughs> He's no, caught! No, no, He's caught! It's God. over, bro! That's, look. Listen, listen. If you if you read <laughs> this, skin, no, 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 no. If you read this, you want right? some water or if something? If you read this, there are there are they are dividing up the land and giving it as an inheritance, right? Look, these passages are about mm -hmm. not screwing up someone's future. Look, look, th th that, look. I'm reading through this, uh -huh. right? There are many rulings about if you curse your parents, you should be put to death. If a young woman who is a virgin is betrothed to a husband and a man finds her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both hey, out of the gate. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. I'm giving what you context. Right Muhammad in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, sure. You have Sheikh Uthman here. See, you, you, you see, you see, you see, you see, you're trying to, you're trying to jump, right? No, 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 you see, no, I'm no, jumping, no, right? No, no, jump, no. I jump, 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 think, jump, no, no, no. jump. You Let me finish. This. You the, jump to this. Uh, this is the same verses. You're saying this should not be same implemented. Same chapter. You're saying Look, this should not be implemented, but you're defending, you're defending. Look at this. You're quoting Deuteronomy. Excellent. Let me. Quoting Deuteronomy, the book you're attacking. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Genesis. I got you, bro. Deuteronomy. I got you. This guy loves Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. You think? Deuteronomy. Hey, everyone. How do we know Muhammad's a prophet? Because he's in the Bible. What are you going to do here at the Dawah table? Attack the Bible. Can't trust Deuteronomy. It's okay. Go ahead. I'll let you speak. How do we know Muhammad's a prophet? Because he's in Deuteronomy, and they don't get it. I'll wait for him. This amazing stuff. All right. I'll let him speak. Go ahead and attack the Bible. I'll let you speak. Go ahead. Speak, bro. Speak. Go ahead. Finish. You done? And that your prophet. You done, bro? You done? Yeah, yeah. You are done. Yeah. He he thinks my name is Dr. Jamal Badawi. You're you're just shooting the tracks. Don't believe in them. Sure. I, listen, I, I, I believe in them, but I didn't write it, so don't think that I wrote it. Now, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me explain this to you now. Go ahead. You want, you want, it's in Spanish. You want the English one? Go for it. Brief illustrated guy to understand. Oh, look at him. Try to get away from this. No, you no, think no, I'm no, going to no, let no, you? No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. Hold on. We're, we're going to stay here first. All right. Now, that you attack the first thing, that you're using first thing, to first thing, your first thing, let me reference this, all right? Okay. I personally have not researched enough on the reference to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the Bible to be making that claim myself. There are other scholars who have and they have written on it and this is for them and I have no problem with that. That does not mean that we believe everything in the Bible is true. We do believe that some of the true message could be in here and the Quran is our guide to that. So we're very clear on that. What I was trying to show you here, so you know, now, you see that, 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 he doesn't want to hear it, he doesn't want to hear it, he doesn't want to hear it, you don't want to hear it. You're about to attack right. Deuteronomy, no, when Deuteronomy I, I, is the I, I, I am the not, I am not. Go ahead, if, attack Deuteronomy, are, are, where we are, find your prophet. Are, are you done speaking? See, like I asked you if you're done, I asked you if you're done, and he said he's done, but he won't let me speak. You notice that? Anybody else notice that? Notice when right. Sheikh Uthman gets, gets right. nervous, he starts... Uh, oh, you think I'm nervous? You better be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you better be nervous. How do we know Muhammad's a prophet? Right. Because he's Listen. in the Bible. What book are we attacking? The Bible. I can tell you're nervous because you're not letting me speak. No, no this is awesome. Yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted yeah. to draw attention. I got you, bro. I because, got you. Because here's what I, got here's you. What I found. You Shaykh are Uthman. done. No, here's what I you see. You see, he won't let me speak. No, no, no. He won't you let can, me speak. You can. I'm to, no, no, I'm you're not letting me speak. You're, 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 you're going on and on. And every time I speak, you interrupt me and bring new things. You're not letting me speak because you know that you're done. What do you mean, done? You're let about me, to let attack let me explain. the book that we are both required so to let, let me speak. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Tell us about Deuteronomy. Can I speak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, when we talk about the Bible, and I've said this repeatedly, no doubt 
there's going to be some things in it, like for example, the commandment not to worship idols and things that we believe would be from God. And the judge there is the Quran. But no doubt from the Quran and from what we believe and from what you know in your heart, there are things that have been changed. So hold on, let me finish now. Let me finish. So for me to say that there is a reference to something that should bring your attention to in the Bible, for example, not worshiping idols and so on, does that mean that I take all of the Bible to be preserved? And I've explained this, but somehow you didn't get it. No, I'm not done. Hold on, hold on, put it away, bro. No, no, I'm, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna speak, bro. I'm gonna speak. I'm, I'm, right I'm gonna speak. Nobody can align my God, right? Now, the reason you're jumping here is because you're caught. Now, here, here in the verses, in the context that we're looking at, I'm not attacking these. All I asked you as a Christian is, should we implement these today? They are in the Bible that if two men fight and a woman squeezes, seizes, not crushes, the balls of another protecting her husband's life, her hand should be cut off and no eye should pity her. But you couldn't answer that, so you try to jump. I said, right? I said no, it should not well, be. Well, why not? We're not under that law system. But, but where does it say that in the verses? Have you read the rest of the Bible? Oh, exactly. You see, you see that now? You see that now? When I was telling you about the ayah, hold on. When I was telling you about the ayah, you told me I read the verses before it and after it. And, and when I told you about other ayat, you were like, that's the problem. Is you keep telling me you got to look at other ayat and other hadith and other. I did not. But, I agreed with you. But, I agreed but, with you. here, hold on. But here in the Bible, just in the it. Bible, I am not. It's on tape. Don't worry about it, bro. That, that's a good thing about recordings, right? I said you so, go to the other verse. I said you have the, okay. the, 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 the close context. Text, and you have Excellent. the wider context. You go through the entire book. And so, I said you got the historical So when context. I talked about so Jizya, so when I talked about Jizya, uh -huh. and I talked about the other ayat and the context from the ahadith and what Umar Khattab did, you told me that's a problem with Islam. It's on tape. It's on tape. You're like, because every time I read an then, ayah, then, then you tell me look at other ayat. But when either, I tell you, when I tell you from the either Bible, either you, you misunderstood you're me, or I was not, or I was not clear enough. Okay. The point I was making, right? You take a verse. Okay. You've got a verse there. Verse okay. sounds clear. Sure. Right? So you would want to just examine, like the Bible. Yeah. You'd want to right. examine the context. Sure. Examine what the meaning of that is. Excellent. You'd examine all of that if you're saying, sure. is this something that applies today? Sure. Same thing with the Quran. Right. Okay. Same thing with the Quran. Excellent. Here's a verse. Is this something that applied to a particular people? Uh, Excellent. Or at all? That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've still never, I've still never gotten to the actual point. The actual okay. point is, so you have passages like, you know, to you be your religion, to me be my religion. Sure. Or um, passages about fighting in self-defense if someone is persecuting sure. Muslims and so on. Sure. And then you get to things like fight those who do not believe in Allah. Right? Sure. So you look at the context. You do. Absolutely. The Excellent. The problem is when you, no try, problem. when you try to arrange these, mm -hmm. uh, you can go to uh, go to the go to the Darus Salaam edition okay. of Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay. Go all the way to the very end. Mm -hmm. uh, so book nine. Okay. Book nine of Sahih al-Bukhari. You have this essay on how to bring these together by, okay. what's his name, Abu Humaid or Ibn Humaid, you heard of him? He was the he was the, uh, the, the, he was the chief justice of Saudi Arabia and the imam at the Grand Mosque and so on. Okay. Okay. So, so, so you, you, you know, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You, you know, Bukhari was like way, way before that time, right? Yeah, yeah we're not okay. talking about, we're not talking well, about about Bukhari. He, he, he makes an attempt to explain how these passages tie together. Which passage are you talking about? The passages of the Quran. Which like, ones? Like, like, like 973, 9123. So, so this is not also. in Bukhari then? This is probably so, uh, like a publisher's note yeah, or something? The, yeah, I, I promise you I'll make my point. I'm, I'm, I'm making no, no, a but, point but, but you're, you're interacting before I even made no, point. No, no, I just want to understand what you're that. saying. I'll okay, go ahead. So, he's taking all these passages mm -hmm. and he's, he's basically answering the question how do we reconcile all these different claims because okay. you have some claims where hey do you be your religion to you be your religion and to me be my religion Other okay past just fight those who not believe in a lot right okay and he puts down Four, he arranges things in four stages, right? Okay. He says there's a stage where Muslims weren't supposed to fight back. They weren't even supposed to fight in self-defense, right? Okay. And then he says, but then after the move to Medina, then they were permitted to fight in self-defense if people are persecuting them and so on. So and like then he says, 
He says. So, well, I'm trying to understand. Badr uh, in Medina. Um, you don't know. I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm, gu I'm guessing he would he would include Badr, uh, right? No, no, no. He might include that in stage three. So stage uh, stage. You know, Badr is very early on, right? Stage two, it's where Muslims are permitted to fight. Okay. Then stage three was where they had to fight. See again, fight. just just the point. They had to, they this had again to fight. shows your ignorance because the first law of allowance to fight came in Badr. Okay, so the third stage is uh, fighting is obligatory, right? You have to you have to fight in self defense. Okay. And then the fourth stage he puts is offensive jihad. Okay. Where you have to actually go out and fight and subjugate people. Right? Okay. Okay. So th that's how he arranges those. That okay. Makes, that makes perfect sense to me. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Yeah. So here's the here's the issue. Right? Okay. Here's the issue. We read the Quran. We read the Quran verse. That okay. sounds like it's calling the fight, right? Okay. But guess what? You can have all kinds of things, all kinds of books that sound like they're calling the fight. Okay. You gotta read them in like context. the Bible, right? So sure. you have an actual uh, very respected scholar who's putting the essay. Who, who, who's this respected scholar? Abu Hamid, the Chief what? Justice of so he was the. Chief Justice, Justice when? Saudi Arabia, uh, 80s, 90s. <laughs> No, no, what right. happened to Sheikh Ibn no, Baz? No, 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 no. no. Dude, you're, 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 you're missing. You're, 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 you're completely misunderstood. You know who Sheikh Ibn Baz is? You're completely misunderstood. You know who Sheikh Ibn Baz is? You're either deliberately, you're either deliberately look, 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 listen, 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 listen. The chief yeah. justice of Saudi Arabia in the 80s and 90s is Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Baz, the head mufti. Um, well, we'll, 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 we'll just look up Ibn, Ibn Humayda. Sure. Okay. So, so let, let, let's look up. All right, go, go for it. But okay, but but but, but go ahead. Finish your point. So he says, "How do we reconcile this?" That's the conclusion that he comes to. Okay. That's the conclusion he comes to. Sure. I look at the same passages. That makes perfect. That makes perfect sense to me. Right? Okay. And so once you have that timeline, then there are basic. There's basically one more question about how do you how you would apply that. Right? Go for it. And the question is. You know, once you've gone through these four stages, okay. are you just in stage four and then that's stage four forever? So, so, so fighting. So, so why so didn't fighting. you ask this? Yeah, no, so. I'm here to help no, you, bro. The other, you said I'm your favorite shake, but you don't one, ask. By the way, this is I got you. To something you I got you. Hold on. Let me, let me finish. Let me add. Go, ahead. go seconds, ahead. Right? So, one, do these four stages apply in such a way that once you've reached stage four, the other three stages do not apply? That's I got your answer. No problem. Or is this contextual? In other words, Muslims who are in sort of a situation like Muhammad was in Mecca, where he's totally outnumbered, mm -hmm. and therefore you're not fighting back, um, would be under under that that sort of rule. Sure. I can see that, right? So that, as far as why you should not be running around implementing Surah 9, verse 29, right. I would interpret it because you're more but, in the but, situation but you're, you're, of Muhammad you're, you're, in, in But you're not a scholar to interpret it, so I don't know why you're coming up with your interpretation. I'm giving his interpretation. <laughs> no, no, you are. Th that's even not what he even, said. That's not what he said. You are giving David Wood are interpreting when you shouldn't. Okay. And and by the way, here's the entire point. Here, here's uh, I, I gave you more than 30 seconds. Keep overall, going. Bro. Here's the overall. Here's the. Then you respond. Here's the overall entire point. The point is. Read the Quran. Right. Get all these verses. All How right. do we reconcile them? Oh, here's a good way to reconcile them. Now it all makes sense. Now okay. it all makes sense. But. That doesn't look good. Fight those who do not believe in Allah. It means that once you get in a certain, certain situation where you're the most powerful force, you violently subjugate people, force them to pay jizya, impose conditions on them, and so on, or you keep fighting them until until they're not, you know, until they're gone or something like that. Okay. Right? So that's what it looks like. And then even with the hadith with Muhammad saying, uh, I've been commanded to fight people until they say there's no God but sure. Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger, and so on. That all fits into that. And here's the point. Here's the point. Um, even if that's completely wrong, even if that is completely wrong, to say, well, you're wrong about that, and therefore you need to go to all these different scholars. You got to go to all these different scholars and consult all these different scholars to figure this out. You're talking about passages that are calling for violence against other people, sure. calling for the violent subjugation <coughs> of the world when you read them like that, right? And in order to figure out what Allah is really saying, you have to do all these, you know, decades of research. I did not say that. So the pro the problem is, the problem is, which we always come back to, the Quran claims to be clear. The Quran claims to be clear. We open it. Well, we got some problem on understanding these verses. How do we reconcile them? We reconcile them in a way that constantly escalates the violence. And if that's wrong, how do you know what what you're supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to you're supposed to spend a lot of time going to all these scholars. But that means that it's just not clear. So we're not talking about reading the context or reading the entire book. You have to go outside of the book, and then when you get to the hadith, then you have to go to the outside of the hadith, and you have to go to all these scholars, 
that is a lot of work to understand who I'm supposed to kill and who I'm not supposed to kill. You know what I mean? Are you done? I'm done. You are done. Now, as I said, you know that I'm not nervous because I let you speak respectfully. And you know you are nervous because you keep interrupting me. So let's see, let's see if you interrupt me now. Let's try it now, right? So now, as I told you from the beginning, the Quran clearly tells you if you don't know, yes al dhikr ask those who know. I didn't tell you you have to go and do tens and years of research. All you gotta do is go to somebody who is learned, who is scholarly, who has knowledge, and say, Shaykh, I read this ayah. I read this hadith, what is the context, how do we implement it? What verse is oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, Allah al dhikr everybody knows the ayah. No, Somebody, what, what, what look, up, look up the ayah uh, in Kuntum La Ta'alamun, Yes, Allah al dhikr I was thinking 21 Sorry, I got you. Hang on. Okay, so can I, see, can I finish now? I, I, just, gonna, I, just, I, just want, I just want to make sure that you're presenting that correctly. Yo, you, can, you can go ahead, I'm just going to look bring it Bring the ayah. If you don't know, ask those who know. We memorize the ayat, we don't really look at so go ahead. You, can I continue or is your nervousness um, not letting me speak? No, no, no. <laughs> All right, there you go. So, so as I said earlier, and I continued saying, and you're still not listening, that the Quran gives you the solution from all this confusion, which is when you don't know something, you don't have to go and study yourself for 10 and 15 and 20. I never said that. You put that in my mouth. What I said is you go to the people of knowledge and ask them. So not to Allah. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to do that, right? So just like when I asked you about the Bible, you told me read the rest of the Bible and you told me that, that this covenant was explained by this and this by this and this scholar said this. In that way, when we as Muslims read an ayah, we don't assume from it without understanding the fiqh of it. Okay, That's why we go as students of knowledge to shiuch and they spend years, 20, 30, 40 years studying all the texts. But not every Muslim has to. Rather, when you go to the scholars, they, having dedicated that life, will explain to the answer in two minutes. If you, David Wood, had just come to me and said, explain to me jizya, then I could sit with you and give you all the different ayat, all the different ahadith, all the different aqwal, and in a few minutes you would have had your answers. But you didn't want the answers, you just wanted to make videos. If you wanted to know about fighting in Islam, we have whole abwab, whole chapters on jihad and qital that bring all those verses and all those ahadith and explain what's nasikh, what's mansuq, what's early, what's later. Right? So it's not an issue. What you're doing is instead of looking at the fiqh, the implementation, you're trying to go to these verses. And you are not looking up these verses randomly. You are getting these in order to attack, and then you're, then you're digging yeah, you from would, there. You that, right? I got you. I would not. You would not go to the Bible. I would not. To attack, right? Again, once again. By the way, so, hold on. Hold on. No, can I, 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 I just want to know is that the verse you were, you were quoting? With, with the. Uh, Ask those who possess the message. So, so the dhikr. Yeah. The dhikr. Ahlu, so ahlu dhikr in kuntum la ta'alamun. Yes. Well, this is talking. This is talking about. Isn't this talking about Christians and Jews? Uh, it is not. Yeah. Before so let me, the also the messengers. You see, I was trying to change no, the no, subject no, no, no. now. No, no. Can I, I, can I finish what I'm saying and then I'll explain the ayah to you? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. And this is a Yusuf Ali translation. Seriously. You, you, you use the Yusuf Ali translation? You don't like it? <laughs> Yusuf Ali was Ismaili, you know that, right? I believe, I believe, Hilali, I believe Hilali Khan actually says this is talking about Jews and Christians here. Oh. So he, he says the previous scriptures. All right, so get, get, Hilali, get Hilali and, I mean, here, look, look at Mustafa Khattab here. What's the, bring it up here. 21.7. Oh, Whose phone is this? Cool. I have no idea. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Finish All right, go ahead. So, let's right. get back to the point. When you right. talked about the four stages that you're speaking about, which is not in Sahih al-Bukhari itself, you're talking about somebody's commentaries know. note, right? Now he's, he's making sense of all of this. Sure, so let me explain this to you. No doubt there was a time when fighting was forbidden, right? And then a time came when fighting was allowed, right? And then the time came that fighting was implemented against certain situations. But if you want to know whether these are stages that cannot go backwards and cannot reconcile between the stages, then the easy thing is to see how the Prophet ﷺ dealt with it. Are there Christians and Jews and tribes that others that Rasulullah ﷺ continue to have treaties with? Are there those that the Khulafa in the time of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman Ali anhum continue to have trade with? For example, from Sham, and they were not being attacked, right? And are those like in Tabuk, for 
example, where they were attacked and what was the context of what was going on when they were attacked. What are the rules and regulation of difa? Ah? For example, are you paying attention to what I'm saying or you're, you're just smirking away, right? In, in difa, ah, when, you, when, you, when you are attacked, for example, there is no need for an Amir. Right? You defend yourself. But offensive jihad, one of the conditions is that you have to have an Amir, a Muslim leader that unites and brings the Muslims together for offensive jihad. Right? So if you're in a time where you don't have such an Amir, you cannot initiate an offensive jihad. Right? Even though you are past the fourth stage. You understand what I'm saying? For offensive jihad, there are different rulings, different amounts of times you give, certain conditions that are done. And even in that time, there is the ability for the Khalifa to make pacts with people, peace treaties with people. Understand? If you look at Abbasiyah and Amawiyah and others, they made treaties with other. Are you paying attention? I'm not objecting. Just Go ahead. clarification. Do, do you believe there can be another uh, another caliph? No. Why not? Okay, just asking. Yeah, why couldn't they? Yeah. I don't want to sidetrack, but how, how would that happen? Would, like, would that be like scholars decide on? Like, I mean, not just scholars, but the Muslim Ummah would come and give bayah to a person, and, and and you know, as as a consensus to come with one leadership yeah. and we hope Allah will give us a Khalifa soon inshallah. okay so now do you understand about the four stages or you just didn't pay attention during that part I understand completely I just okay good disagree and it wasn't it wasn't really my what, what did you disagree with when I said the point I'm the point no, no, I'm hold on so so the in, point in, I'm making, if, if I were to go to hmm, I'm really confused about these passages let me, go, ask to, a scholar. Let me go to a scholar yeah right. okay, go ahead what if the scholar tells me yeah you have these four stages and once sure. you reach stage four then there's this sure I go to a different scholar and he says what that's nonsense what are you talking about easy okay. easy answer for you just like a Christian if I went to a Christian preacher and he told me that God made people in his image and that's why God was white and black people aren't a part of God and whatever or, or, or the Christian pastor here in California that was saying that the pulse shooting was a good thing and gays should be shot and so on as a Christian he may be a pastor but you would say does that come in line with what he's presenting from the biblical scriptures. So we as Muslims say, Zin bil kitab wa sunnah. Hold on, listen now, bro. When a scholar gives you... Just reach the problem. When a scholar gives you clear evidences from the Quran and Sahih Ahadith, then that's the scholar you should follow. When a scholar misinterprets Quran and you can see the evidence is being presented by... I'll give you an example. Let's say a scholar tells you, light this guy on fire, right? And I tell you, David, don't do it, bro, because Rasulullah forbid punishing with the fire, right? So now which scholar are you going to listen to? Right? True. Yeah. So now which scholar should you listen to? The one who can back it up. There you go. But that means it comes down to the sources. The of course. Is when reading the sources. Of course. But the difference is the scholar understands the different sources, different ayat, and brings them together to explain it to you. You, David Wood, are just Googling one ayah, not understanding the rest, and trying to make your own interpretation. Yeah. Hence the problem. Like this is me. You're acting is you? like this is me. Oh, we're talking about you. I'm, I'm, oh. So, for, for example, in this, in this uh, Surah 21, verse 7. Right? Okay. So, you got Yusuf Ali. Before thee also, the oh. apostles we sent so, were, so we're, talking were about but Yusuf. men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving that as an okay. example. Before thee also, the apostles we sent were but men, to okay. whom we granted inspiration. If you realize this not, ask of those who possess the message. Okay. Then you read the Hilali Khan, and we sent not before you, O Muhammad, but men to whom we inspired. So ask the people of the reminder, yes. the scriptures, the Torah and the gospel, if yes. you do not know. Excellent. So here, so, now, so anyway, here, here's the question. Let here's me explain point. it now. This is, the, this is Hillel and Khan, mm -hmm. Hillel and Khan, and they're saying what this verse is talking about is asking asking Jews and Christians who have their book. Sure, right? I got you. So if it's not, if, that's the point. If it's not what that means, who in the world am I supposed to listen to? Let me, let me tell you. Okay, good. Is Hilali or Yusuf Ali your uh, person you have asked? No, they, they, it is not. Yeah, you, you just there. you just Google it, right? No, they are not. I went, they, I went to their translation. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You Google it, right? You you, you looked it up. I did not Google it at all. Okay, so you looked it up on the internet, right? Yeah. This is not. This is not. Ground. This is not asking a teacher. Mm -hmm. This is you wow. again going in, looking at one verse, and thinking you understand it, right? If you had asked a scholar, then I would have told you, or, or I'm a student of knowledge, but a scholar would have told you that this ayah in the explanation from the Sahaba, from the Sahaba themselves who were there, explained that no doubt that the people of scripture had a knowledge about 
Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that's why many of them became Muslim. But this ayah is applicable for us as well, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa taala used the word dhikr. You know what dhikr means? Reminder. Right. But what is dhikr in the Quran? Inna anzalnahu. Right there. Dhikr. It applied, it applied to the earlier scriptures. Right. But this is this is the Quran making tafsir of the Quran. If you understand, right? The word dhikr has been used for the Quran itself and for the Torah and the Gospel. Right. Exactly. Why? Because part of the wahi. Right. So under that, the Quran and what is preserved, if we had, from the earlier scriptures, the hadith that is a part of the wahi, those scholars that are well versed in the dhikr, then they are the ones you should ask. So today, if you go to a scholar who is well versed in the Quran, in the hadith, then this ayah is as applicable to us as it was to those that I was talking about earlier, that if you knew, then you should have looked at the scriptures which mentioned the Prophet and accepted it, right? But this ayah is not nasikh or mansukhan, right? This is where the muhkam, the ability to give hukam continues. Now, if you ask a scholar today who is well versed in the dhikr, in the Quran, in the hadith, then they can give you references and explain the concept. No problem, it's very easy. But instead of going to that route, you want to, I want to look up this ayah and think that I know what it means. I want to look up this hadith, whether it's strong or weak and think what it means. Why not just come and say, hey, I want to understand the concept of jizya from a fiqh perspective. So looking at all of the ayat, looking at all of the hadith, the research that we've already put in, sit down and explain it to you. But you don't want the answer, right? It doesn't work at all. Why does it not work? Because I come to you. Explain this to me. Sure. A different explanation from the Who? one that I get from Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is not your teacher. You, you didn't ask no, Ibn. You look up, Again, you look Ibn, up, no, no, hold on, hold on. Ibn Kathir is a book books. of tafsir. He wrote books to get his book. I know, I know. Years, but, right? but he was not explaining fiqh here. He was explaining an ayah and things that are related. It was not in the implementation. It's it's not a big book of fiqh. So instead of going to, you, you didn't go to any other Islamic scholar and ask this question. You went and tried to make your own interpretation based on Ibn Kathir or whatever else. Here, I, I gave you the answer, right? I gave you the other ayat, other ahadith, but then you didn't like that. You want to continue to make your videos, right? But what I'm saying is, why not come and ask? If you don't want to ask me, not me. Go ask another scholar. Sit down with a scholar, a, a qualified Islamic scholar, and say, I want to understand the ahkam of qital. In our time, what are the ahkam of qital? And a scholar will say, this ayah, this ayah, this ayah, this ayah, this ayah, this hadith, this hadith, this hadith. You don't have to do that research. That's what a scholar does. And with all of that, he'll give you a clear answer. No. But you don't want a clear answer. No. This is the same that's as... Not, as you, no, exactly. No, no, no. I say you don't want a clear answer. He goes, no, no, I don't want a clear answer. Let me give, let me, let me give you an example. Right? So, Go ahead, you bro. take a verse like no compulsion. Truth comes it, out, bro. Truth verse, comes out, whether you, you like it or not. take a verse like no compulsion in religion. Sure. You go to something like... Um, a scholar. Tafsir Qurtubi. No, again, again. Uh, I, 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 instead of going to a scholar, you're going to Qurtubi, Notice, which you don't understand. You can never read about Islam. You can't just read You can. You can. No, 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 no. Just read the commentaries. You're only... Just, just like, person. just like person when I you. mentioned about the Bible, you told me you got to look at other verses and other that you can't just read the Bible. You can, agree, but, but you're, you're as as, other as of the Quran. You're I, I am, to go to a I am. But what I'm saying is, if you're willing to dedicate years and years of research, uh -huh. looking at all the different issues, I have no problem with that. But as a student of knowledge, take hold, years on. And years of hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen. You're talking about a whole system of life. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a penal code. No, I'll, You're, I'll be talking about a verse. No, 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 no. Like, but, 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 but again, the Quran is not just one verse. Right? You're talking about something that has the rules and regulations of war. You're talking about those stories of the past, of the future, about prayer and fasting, about dealing with your neighbors. All of that, no doubt, if you want to start implementing it, requires scholarly work. Right? There are ulema from the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, that were the scholars amongst the Sahaba. And when a companion didn't understand the ayah, he would go to them. That's why Rasulullah ﷺ said, take the Quran from Ibn Mas'ud and Ubay Ibn Ka'ab and others, right? So you would go to them. And then when they would ask them, they would explain it not from their own interpretation, from the other ayat of Quran, looking at context, looking at ahadith, they would give an answer. Today, for example, if you want to get a medical question answered, you have no problem 
going to a doctor. You don't say, why can't I just pick up Gray's Anatomy and make my own insertion into my liver, right? But no doubt the hereafter and Islamic laws is something that's, that's complicated because you're implementing. If you just want to read for your own spiritual benefit, read the Quran all you want. But if you want to implement Islamic jihad laws or or, or hudud or hudud or hudud, then then you need to go. Okay, if you want to understand it, excellent. So when you want to understand the rules and regulations of jihad and jizya and things, you need to go to those who are experts in it. Just like if you want to understand legal system in America, you don't just pick up the constitution and go, to me, 2B means this. No, you go to a legal expert to understand it. Just like the Bible. If you want to understand the Bible, we have people like McCarthy and others who write these. But you even told me, McCarthy, when I pointed out from McCarthy, you were like, that's just one guy. You threw him under the bus. But you would go to a Christian and ask, hey, is this applicable today or not? Is this a, a, a proverb? Is this a, a simile? Is this Jesus giving a direct ruling? Or is this something that it has a different meaning? Just like that, but you don't want to give the same courtesy to Islam because David Wood just wants to make videos. No, wrong. <laughs> so, and I know we have to be wrapping up here, but we do. Yeah. Just, to, just to explain my perspective here, right? So back to what I mentioned earlier. And this is not to to belabor this particular point, but it's if I were to look it up in, sure. in the tafsir of Quran. Sure. So I look up this verse. He gives according to this guy, this guy, and this guy. It means this. Exactly. According to this guy, this guy, and this guy. Perfect example. Thank you. Something completely different. Thank you. According to this guy, this guy, and this guy, but he's quoting Muhammad's companions and all these other Salam guys awesome. who are yes. giving all of these different interpretations. Exactly. Right? So here's the thing. So here's the thing. The idea you, that you, you the just idea, nailed your coffin right now. But go ahead. The further you go back in time, uh -huh. the less they know. To That's where not true. To where Muhammad's companions are walking around, the verse means this, and someone else says, "No, it doesn't mean that. It means this." And they're giving they're giving completely different uh, interpretations. They're I'll let you speak. They're applying completely different hadiths to the situation. They're saying in the historical context, the historical context for this one was this one. The other one says, no, the historical context was that. Excellent. If there's that much confusion back then, the idea, I'm just going to go to a scholar, all the scholar could possibly do is explain why there's so much confusion. Nope. Unless everyone back then, except one, one, one particular I got you, bro. I got you. Go ahead. Had it correct. Speak. And anyway, here's the point. Here's the point. That wasn't the point. I read a verse. <laughs> I read a verse of the Quran. Go ahead. I read, a, I read a verse of the Quran. Huh. That sounds like this. Let me look it up. So I look it up in the commentaries. And I find that according to Muhammad's companions, they didn't agree on it. There's all these different interpretations. Sure. Right? So I go around, look at the, the relevant hadiths. And you get different interpretations of the verse. Sure. And your solution is, well, you have to go to a guy. The problem is, I could go to a guy who favors this guy in the commentaries sure. more than this other guy. And so I'm still going to get, you're acting like if I go to scholars today, I'm going to get this consensus opinion on what this verse means. And I know enough to know that that is not true. You don't. I do. <laughs> let me okay. explain to you why. Okay, let, let me tell you now. Okay. All, all are you done speaking? Are, are, you, are you done speaking? Go. Are you done speaking, bro? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thank you for nailing your coffin. Let me explain most it. Most confusing religion. Let me, it is not. Yeah. Most confusing. <laughs> yeah, it it's sure most is. confusing because of the lack of your ability to understand one simple concept, which and is. No one could agree ask, what any again, of these you, 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 you see, you see, you see how he doesn't let me speak. Perfectly you see clear. that? All your audience, let him see Perfectly how clear. I quietly listen to him because I'm not nervous, but this nervous guy, he keeps interrupting me because he knows he nailed his coffin. I will explain it to you. Well, I, because you're not letting me speak now. When we go back to Qurtabi, there are riwayat there that are authentic. There are riwayat there that are da'if, that are weak. So this is the job of scholars. Qurtabi, Tabari, Ibn Kathir, they collected all of this. Tabari, many of the riwayat he collected, he himself says this is weak. Ibn Kathir as well. These are jami'a tafasir. These are tafasir that put together the bigger picture of for scholars to go and look at research. But the problem is David Wood is too ignorant to understand. Oh, hold on, let me finish. 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 When you look at 10 interpretations, the reason you're confused 
truth because you don't have enough knowledge or enough sense to ask a scholar. The scholars, what they do, like my teacher, Sheikh Abdul Salam, he has a book of tafsir where he brings those interpretations and says, this narration is da'if, it's weak. This is why it's weak. Its chain is weak. Qurtabi mentions it, but it's da'if. Ibn Kathir mentions it, but it's da'if. Al-Tabari mentions but it's weak. And then here is what is authentic. What you should have done is started with a simpler tafsir, like for example, tafsir Sa'di, which only gives one opinion. He does not give all these other opinions, which many of the I scholars... all the opinions. Excellent, but then you are not qualified enough to know the weak from the strong, right? Do you know Ilm al-Rijal? You don't, because you don't, do you? If you're saying that Muhammad's companions... Again, you're saying this, you're saying this again, and I've explained this, that it's not that the Muhammad's companions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are wrong, it's because many of those narrations are weak in their chains. So people were lying about them. They were not lying. Again, there is a, there is a, difference. There is a difference between kathab, a lie, and a da'if hadith, right? But when something is not authentically established, we don't rely upon them. You understand? It's not that the companion is lying, it's that people make mistakes mistakes, people like yourself, it's, it's they're, they're people, you make more mistakes than them, so don't get carried away. You took, uh, I, I you, you took, so. you, 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 you took, you, 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 you did, you took Ibn Abbas's uh, is a narration of one ayah and plugged it somewhere else, right? That no, type, that, you, you, no, 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 so made who, who made that website? You don't know. You're the one that told me you it's don't a know. You told me it's a Shia website. Because of the name, right? And 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 and, 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 and Muslim. Listen, I, I didn't make that claim. It could be. Okay. Okay. But you're making a claim it's Muslims without knowing. This is your false assumption, right? But that ayah has not been explained by Ibn Abbas. You falsified that by misreading a website. Now, like that, there are by other people by trusting somebody you don't know, so which is funny. Kortubi anyway, is making the mistake of trusting all these different, different not. Again, no, once again, no. 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 Once again, no. Let me finish. If, 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 Let me finish. If you see, if court to be gives so, ten, if court to be gives ten interpretations, mm -hmm. and these are all traced back to Muslim scholars, right? If he gives ten interpretations and nine of them are wrong, sure. That means well, but, that but, means that the false information and the mistakes are sure. massively outnumbering. Let me, let me explain this again. The truth. When there are ten narrations, there will not be ten different opinions. It will be one will say, for example, it's Maki, one will say it's Madni. One will say this is for this ayah, this is for this ayah, right? So it's not like there are ten different interpretations, but there may be weak narrations. Qurtabi, Tabari, these are research level books these are not supposed to be just for people like yourself who don't know sahih from daif that go and think they know hold so on let me let me finish let me finish let me finish again once again once again read the quran all you want read the hadith all you want but when you don't know ask those who know that's why you should have a teacher. That's why you should have shiyukh who dedicate their life to understand what is strong from weak. Because what happens when you don't, like Christianity today, when you get three Christians, you get four different Christian beliefs because everybody wants to make up their own beliefs, no, right? No, no, I'm giving an example to understand, right? But in Islam, Alhamdulillah, Allah protected the Quran, one, with the Arabic language, so we can learn it and understand it, so we can know the meanings of words. We can't know it. Yes, we can. Secondly, we have, alhamdulillah, the Quran that explains the Quran. We have ayat that make tafsir of ayat. Alhamdulillah, there are, there are things where there are clear, sahih, authentic hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that explain the ayat. There are authentic narrations from Sahaba and Tabi'un and the ulema of Islam that took these, right? They but the problem, the, the problem the is that they do. The problem no, is, let me, let me finish. Bro. I'm saying, no, they don't. Let me finish, right? Okay. When you look at the meanings of words, jami'a tafasir will give you everything that is reported, right? But no, for example, no scholar in Islam says, Qul huwa Allah wahad, doesn't mean that Allah is one. Right? No scholar does that, right? Rather, they come to a consensus, ijma, and much of tafsir is by ijma, is by consensus. And kutub of tafsir explain that. But your problem is you don't want to ask somebody who knows. You want to go and, and, and read here and read there, misunderstanding those ayat it's and then try to implement man. it. It's, it's very confusing. simple, very simple. The most confusing ask religion out the there. The people of knowledge. Is that is that difficult for you? That well let me let me slow it down. Ask the people of knowledge. Sign go, language. You want me to sign language for if you? If I go, if I go to 
کون سی زبان بولو یار اردو بولو یو تھنک مالکیز اینڈ حنفیز ہیو ڈفرنس ان تفسیر دیٹس ہاؤ اگنورنٹ یو ار مالکی اوپین کین یو نیم ون مالکی فک بک نیم ون مالکی فک بک یو ول ون رائٹ ناؤ نیم ون مالکی فک بک نیم ون مالکی فک بک Just one. Let me break this down. Name to me one Maliki fiqh book. Not the point. You can tell me if I'm wrong. He doesn't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. He doesn't know I a single. Okay. Name me. Name me one. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Just I'm showing your ignorance. Am I name right me wrong? one Shafi'i fiqh book. Am Just name me one Hanafi fiqh book. Name me one Hanbali fiqh book. I, name me one Wahhabi fiqh book. You issue. don't know a single fiqh book's name. He knows what the issue is coming. He knows what the issue is coming. Go ahead, bring it. You go to one of these schools. Okay. It says that if you're going to execute someone for apostasy, okay. you have to give them a waiting period. Okay. A certain number of days, right? All Three of them said that, but okay. Right? No, some of them say you don't have Who? to. I would have to look it up. <laughs> you know, I, look it up where? You know I'm right. I look it up where? No, you're not right. All of the mazahib, all of the mazahib agree that, that if to. you're going to, you have to, you have to, you have to give that so person I, a chance. So I quote someone who said, hold on, hold on, listen, 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 listen. They, the they disagree listen, as well on whether listen, female apostates are to be executed or not? Let me explain this. Is there, is there a disagreement among let the four let schools? Me, let me explain. Is there a disagreement among the four schools let me on explain. whether female apostates are killed like male apostates? Not Mu'tamidan. Right, yeah. but you don't even know what that means. So I gotta explain it to you. Explain okay, it. when you say a Shafi'i book or a Maliki book or a Hanafi book or a Hanbali book or a Zahiri book, many scholars, thousands or hundreds of thousands within that Madhab wrote books. Uh -huh. Many of them were wrong about things. Many of them scholars, were, got scholars, yeah, oh, people. Man. Uh, oh man, I'm glad I didn't go to oh, I'm, I'm glad that you think that the Christian scholars never get anything wrong, right? I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't uh, go to those uh, scholars. Uh, 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 uh. Katcha. Katcha again. Katcha again. So, 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 so you're telling me, you're telling, you're telling me Christian scholars. Listen, you're saying Christian scholars never get anything wrong. Christian well, it's over. It's over. You're done. Wallahi, you're done. If you have a Wallahi, you're done. Wallahi, you're done. Me how to act in the like, world. Christian scholars never get anything wrong. Is that true? No. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't go to those look, scholars, look, right? Look, look. Oh, come on, man. You're done. You're now, now, let me, let me explain the point to you. You're interpreting me as saying sure. that, oh, Muslim scholars can get something wrong. Shame they on can. me because I wouldn't. No, no. no Muslim scholars can't. Absolutely can. not. I'm saying when... <laughs> If you're claiming, yes. you're, you're acting like there's this consensus. You pick a scholar on certain order, issues. On certain scholar. issues, there are ijma. On certain issues, there is ijma. Certain issues, there is khilaf. Yes. We study those. Now, let me explain yes. the madhab. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because, because, like, like, let me let me benefit no, you no, no, by letting you learn something. No, I, I wasn't even I'll done. You interrupted me. You interrupted me. Keep this short. You, you always say that, and then you go on. Go ahead. Very short. Go ahead, bro. I got you. Keep this very short. So, in Christianity, there are consensus issues. In Islam, there are consensus issues. Agreed. When we look up the issues where there are disagreements sure. uh, in, in Islam, sure. it's things like fight those who do not believe in Allah. Sure, and Christianity. Carry out sure, oh, you, you think all those crusades and all those battles for the cross no, weren't not, under the they're, Bible? They're not getting that from there. They, they didn't use the Bible to justify crusades? Oh, you're as no, ignorant no, of history no, as no, you no, are of no, Islam. No, what are they using? Excellent, excellent, what, what, excellent, what, what excellent, excellent. excellent. I'll tell you what, hold on, hold on, Islam hold on, people. hold on. If Love you go... Enemies. If you, uh, that's what the Crusaders said when they no, raped, no, massacred with a cross. Saying, Love your enemies, I'm right? Saying, where did they okay, get it from? Excellent. Do this. When you go home, mm -hmm. look up the Pope's writings using the Bible the to justify. Yes? What verse? Give me a verse that you should use. I, I, look, I am not the one that, that, that studies the Bible on the Pope. Right? I didn't come with that you claim. Spend, spend but I'll tell you what. Attacking the Bible. You no, I don't. No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. The look, there are plenty of verses that they have used. I'm, one. I'm, I'm, I want one. One verse sure. that would actually, in All context right. from a sure. scholar, no be, problem. Used, be used to justify. You want just a verse? No problem. I got you. Unlike you, I don't Google things. I look up the actual books. It'll take me a minute. I'm, I'm waiting. All right, good. You're in the, uh, you're in the wrong, wrong section. No, I'm not. You looking for Luke 19:27? Try that one. Yeah, that's right. 
Luke 19:27. Excellent. All right. I do. I do. I do. I do. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Can this verse not be used to slaughter people? If thank anyone, you. No. Thank you. If anyone. Thank you. If you if you think people can be that sloppy, because what happens? Oh. Context, oh. Now we need. Okay. Okay. So so yeah, now yeah, look yeah, at. Yeah. That's go, ahead, perfect, go ahead. That's a perfect example. Excellent. It is. Go to Luke 19:27. You start Excellent. reading at verse 12. Okay. Jesus is telling a story. He Excellent. Tells a story yes. About a king. And what's the point of the story? To give you a lesson. No, it's to use the <laughs> no, no, yeah. The story is not to give you a lesson. If and that, this is, a, and, 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 and why, uh, listen, when you have such problems, I got you, okay. bro. But when you give stories, you are giving your disciples a lesson. And if you are saying that no Christian has ever used this verse, Show me one. Sure. We'll look it up when we go. Be, all right, sure. Well, sure. We'll look Christian it up. would have to be the biggest idiot in all of history. There are plenty of big idiot story, Christians, bro. There are plenty of big idiot Christians. You know that. I'm you know that's that. That's true. But we're not. We're not <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hitler quoted Bible verses in his speeches. Is that not true? Uh, yeah. He also said he preferred his. Oh, 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 oh! But he did quote biblical verses true. to he, promote his genocide. A, a so are there Christians? Are there Christians who use biblical verses to massacre and kill? You have just proven yourself to be wrong. Thank you very much, David Wood, for coming out. Absolutely Have a good trip. Absolutely not. You're yeah. talking about consensus of scholars, and you name a bunch of people. I, I, look, 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 look. You said, you said, you said, no. You said, you said that a Muslim who just picks up the Quran can misunderstand these ayat. And I told you that the same is true for the Bible. And you said, show me a verse no. that a Christian could pick up and read and, and misuse it to kill people. I showed it to you. Absolutely. And you admitted on no. camera that no. a person who believed in Jesus, according to his own admission, any Hitler who used them. Sees that it's now, a story. go he home. Literally starts, go home. The passage like, literally look, starts I, with, I, and he told I them understand. they're terrible. But there are Christians that you will find Where? that have taken. For sure, we'll look it up. When you when you go home, look up the Pope. Christian quoted 1927. The, the, hold on, listen, listen. When you go home, look up the Pope's writings to justify the crusade, and look at the biblical verses that were used. How's that, Dave? I'm still waiting for. Are you going to look it up when you go home? The Pope's writings to justify you the look crusade. It up, send me the verses. Okay, let's do it. Send me the verses. Send me the verses. All right, and if you find them, you're going to admit that you were wrong. If you. Let's see. You still not understand the point. You're talking. If I find you what you're asking for, will you admit you're wrong? Yes or no? It's a pretty simple question, Dave. If you show me. Uh huh. If you show me. That popes use the Bible to justify massacring people. Not what, not the challenge I issued. Uh -huh. Not the challenge I issued. Why not? The challenge I issued was you're, so you have all you have all of these disagreements on things like carrying out apostasy sure. laws and things like that, sure. right? Among scholars. If I find you Christian thought, scholars thought, that have used biblical have, verses to kill people, if you have, how's that? No, you have to show that there's disagreement. You have to show that there's actual disagreement. So you mean there's agreement that you should kill people on those verses? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm assuming if somebody no. misunderstood it, like the Pope, that there are others who would disagree I, with him. Not. No. You're, no? you're, you're still not getting the situation. <laughs> If you, I, if, if I if find you the Pope, pope give me okay, go ahead. if some Pope said the reason we're going to go kill people the Muslims. is because Luke 19:27 sure. says it. Okay. Right? Okay. Reading the passage would show that that guy's an idiot who sure. happens to be Pope. Right? The same thing with any scholar. All right. Reading Surah 9 verse 29 sure. in context. And saying, fight those who do not believe, means that at least once you reach a certain stage in society, you're supposed to fight those who do not believe in Allah, and you read the commentaries. If the, someone the, concluding that sure. is not an idiot. So if a you don't Christian, have to be an idiot. If a Christian That's the point. Sees, there are reasonable let me, interpretations let me of these. There's no so, reasonable so you are interpretation. Saying, you are saying that if a Christian scholar takes that to be a problem and say the lesson here for us to learn is that you kill those that didn't want you to reign and that's why we're going to kill those Muslims, Spanish Inquisition and all of that that were, that were supported by biblical verses by Christian scholars of the time, right? If I prove you that, 
Will you admit you're wrong? You did not. He listen. still won't. You did not still listen. won't. You did not listen to anything I just said. I did. I did. But you, you, you just don't want to admit because no, you know I'm no. going to prove it. Pope, you know I'm going to come back with no. evidence. If a pope were to quote 1927, sure. when the context shows there is no possible way Why not? to interpret it that way. Why not? Well, what if the pope it, feels, it, it, as a scholar, it, you know, the, the same thing, you, you if, feel. If a Muslim scholar quoted some verse exactly. and completely destroyed exactly. the context. Exactly. The next verse destroyed it. Exactly. Right? So, 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 so this, this, this is not the next not, verse, okay? But, but this is the all. issue, right? This is the issue. Mm -hmm. When I showed you all those other verses as well, the problem was that you were all like, well, read the other part, read this, read that, right? And there are Christians, scholars and others, experts in the Bible that have used biblical verses to carry out horrible, horrendous crimes. And point. now, and now, now when I am telling to you that I'll bring you those evidences, names and, and which verses and everything, you are still trying to find a back way out because you know no. I'm going to find it and you know you're going to be proven wrong you, again. You missed the point entirely. I'm okay. saying you take any of these verses sure. and say this means we should go kill people. Sure. You would have to either be insane or have some... So agenda. all those here's Christian scholars say. were insane. Here's what, and here's what you could say about Christianity and Islam. Sure. There are people who have agendas sure. who will knowingly distort the meanings of verses. Sure. In order to get what they want. I'm so sure you, so say, you, that so about, you, sure you don't, say that about ISIS, right? That they're, I, I, they're distorting passages, I agree with right? you. I, I agree with you. So, so, so you, you would say there is point. no Christian that sincerely believed that killing homosexuals is a biblical order on us. Um, if you try, try again, if a Christian tried to apply that today, I would regard him as insane. Really? Or so all the, massive, so, agenda, so, massive agenda. So, 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 Mr. Anderson, the Christian preacher from Arizona, if he who, says who did say that homosexual yeah, should, should be, be put executed, to death. I would, you haven't I would watched his video. No. <laughs> preacher Anderson, go watch his news okay. footage where he shows the Bible and says that is the ruling in Christianity for for for. There's for, no ruling in Christianity. You'd have that's to go what he to said. Old that's what he said. And He's a, he he he's showed ignoring the entire new covenant. So now you are caught on tape. I'm not caught. A Christian he a preacher. He is a scholar of the Bible. Scholar? Yes, he is. He, he feels scholar. he is. Yes. Oh, he feels he is. Oh, he has a large following. He has degrees. He okay. has right. So when no, now, now he's caught. When now he's caught. Watch him run. Not at all. A Christian scholar, said, a minister said, with a following, said, using the biblical verses, feels that the order for him is he that, is with context, denied, is that you is that is that homosexual should be put to death. So you're saying. So which one is he? Which one is he? You think so? I don't know. I'm not going to assume that. Some people don't. So so. Preacher yeah, Anderson, yeah. David Wood is saying you're either insane or have an agenda. I am. Right. Check. If you guys, you guys, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You guys, covenant. you guys, work it out amongst your Christian selves, then, and then come to us and talk about it. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much. Tell me, how many Christians are executing homosexuals? Plenty. And yeah, and plenty. You you haven't been you you, you you haven't been. You, wait, wait, listen, 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 listen. You haven't been to South Sudan. You haven't been to Russia. You haven't been to other places where there are homosexuals being killed in the name of Christianity. You, you haven't. Yeah, yeah, there are. Of course, we already agreed earlier that many people can misunderstand things, and people's actions are not an evidence. But scripturally, can people misunderstand the Bible? Even scholars, you have been proven, and you threw the poor you Anderson still, guy you, under the bus. Still, Preacher Anderson. Preacher Anderson. Even though I may not agree with you on a lot of things, but I do feel pretty bad that David threw you under the bus. Have a great day. This from the guy who throws Ibn Kathir on the bus. I did not. I explained the weakness <laughs> in the narration. I love, I love Ibn Kathir. And, and I love Allah. And I love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And says, oh, I can't believe Deuteronomy, Exodus. Look at these horrible teachings. You, you know you got caught, bro. You know. You know. You know. You know. You know the example ended your point. And now, and now, you just want to make your voice bite. Make your, make your sound bite. No, go to any scholar. I told you earlier, I wasn't talking. I'm a student of knowledge. Go speak to a scholar. No problem. Any scholar? A, a scholar who will give you answers with evidences, yes. Ahlul Dhikr. Okay, well, any scholar can say, here are the stages of jihad. Again, again, if a scholar tells you to do something that is clearly against the hadith, then you know that's not a scholar upon the Quran, the Sunnah, and the way of the Salaf of the Ummah, right? How so, can, how can fight those who do not believe in Allah be against sure. the hadith when Muhammad said, I've been commanded to fight people until they say sure. there's no God but Allah? Right, because you can go to other hadith and try I got to, you, and try I got to you, use I got those you, bro. to change the meaning, but there aren't a lot of clearer passages than fight those who do not believe. Right. Then we look at Muhammad, look. I've been commanded to fight people until mm -hmm. they say that there's no God but Allah. 
And if you get to a position where you say, oh, but in order to understand when, those, you have to When the Quran says, but if they incline towards peace, then incline towards it too. Then, then what? No, no. Not but but isn't the Quran, right? It's under a, a different so, so, stage. Uh, under a different uh, no, no. Jihad. Which, which, where does it say that it's under defensive jihad? That's how you that, that, that's how, No, that's you got caught it. again. What is it, 60? It. Hold on, hold on. Ooh, poor guy. Try, try, try. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got you, I got you, bro. <laughs> oh, poor, poor, poor Dave. Keep going, keep going. I got you, bro. Don't worry about it. Eight. Surat Anfal. The spoils of war. He just said this is defensive jihad time. Right? Nope. Surat Anfal is defensive jihad. This is the first time I've heard that tafsir. So, in number 60, this is defensive jihad for him. Prepare against them what you believers can of military power and cavalry to deter Allah's enemies and the enemies as well as, as, as other enemies unknown to you, but known to God. This, this is offensive right now. Whatever you spend in the cause of Allah will be paid to you in full and that you will not be wrong. He just considered this defensive type. But if the enemy in an offensive jihad time, if the enemy is inclined towards peace, make peace with them. Boom. Boom. Not the final revelation uh, before after, uh, before. <laughs> after. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> I I so this is defensive jihad? Is that this is a defensive jihad ayah? Yes. <laughs> yes. Preparing for war and going, getting yes. a seed for war or defensive yes. jihad. Are you, going out and, are you going out and subjugating look, the world? Look, look, are you look, look, look. People Surat and Fal. Surat and Fal. The spoils eight of war. Nine. Which came later? Spoils. Sir eight or sir nine? Which one came later? Oh, you think they came Which numerically? One came Which one came later? You think they came numerically? No. Oh, Which one came later? There are ayat in both. Are you telling me that let me, eight let me explain it. Let me explain it. There are ayat in Surat Tawbah and Surat Anfal that came in different time periods. They didn't come one surah at a time. You miskeen guy, you didn't know this? These surahs are not revealed one at a time. There were ayat revealed in the eighth surah. Listen, listen, that. listen. I don't have to look that up. But this is offensive jihad. You don't know? And I don't know. I'm not, I don't okay. know everything, bro. I got you. But here, even with offensive jihad, Allah says that if the enemy is inclined towards peace, make peace. Uh -huh. This surah is called Anfal, which is the spoils of war, which are not from defensive jihad. Boom. David Woods, ignorance Wrong. proven again. Fight. So Ghanima uh, uh, and Fal came me, from defensive let, jihad? Let me, let me put this slightly differently. Uh, Ghanima comes from that, defensive that, jihad. If that were Allah's final ruling, just as the earlier rulings about sure. fighting people who are attacking you or something like that, sure. right? If those are the final rulings, you wouldn't need 929. Why not? You wouldn't need fight those who don't believe in Allah. No, 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 no. You don't understand the ayah. You this is a problem. Let me, let me explain it, right? When you have. A, a time when you talk about the ayat about Quran coming, they are coming during different battles. And if an ayat comes about a battle during Hunayn or Badr or, or Uhud or any of those, it doesn't mean that other ayat about jihad will not be revealed during other battles. It's not like those are enough. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you more rulings, more explanation, more encouragement. These are part of how the Quran was revealed. The Quran is not revealed Surah 8 and Surah 9. Ayat are revealed in context of what's going on. That's why even some ayat in Surah al-Baqarah are going to be early and some are going to be later. Some are, this is why surahs are not revealed chunks, but rather for us to understand the nope. context. Oh, smoke but you know but now, now, that. I don't know that. You know that? You, so, so to well, God that you think I know that. Well, I don't, right? And you I don't either. You, you don't either. How do you know that? Be, over because and, what? Over and over again it talks about. Who, no, who, how do you know that the surah, in, the ayah in surah Tawbah is after that of Anfal? Give me evidence now. You don't. You don't you know. Go, I just do you know? How do you know me. that then? Because you don't know. You're saying that's before you, the revelations. I, I said I don't know. Okay. I have to look at the okay, Asbab and Nuzul. Out, but you said you do know that. So I'm asking, where's the evidence for you knowing that? I'm You've got none. Zero. Zilch. None. And I won't none. Be, I won't be able to so look can, it up, right? No, no, tell me. Go ahead. Look it up. How do you know that already? You said you know that already. So Surah go ahead. Nine, the last major surah revealed. <laughs> Surah 9 is the last major surah of the Quran revealed. He doesn't even know the, the ayat and how they were revealed. What's the last ayat revealed in the Quran? Um, 100 and... Don't wait a minute. No. <laughs> 100 and... <laughs> I, I thought you were saying the last chapter. It's the, uh, it's the one... Your religion's been completed? It is not. 
Miskeen. He doesn't know. See, this is the problem. You guys need to know. This man doesn't know about Islam. He just pretends. He plays it on TV. Look, all he wants, all he wants, all he wants, all he wants is your money. You can't. Right? You see? That's all he wants. I'm sorry. It's, uh, be honest, bro. Be honest. My life be honest about under it. under the shade of my spirit. It, it is. Your livelihood is under the shade of your lies. This from the guy who wants <laughs> Your livelihood is under the shade of your lies. Jews and Christians have be to honest. Be honest, bro. You see this? You see this now? You can't answer. You can't what? answer. Show me, show me evidence. No, no. I, I, same subject. Show me evidence that the ayah in Surah Tawbah was after this ayah in Surah Anfal. I've, okay. I've never even heard that disputed. But you I've said you know. Disputed. He said he knows. How did you know if you haven't looked it up? I have read. I've read that okay. repeatedly. From who? Over, over From who? And over again. From who? About Surah 9 being From who? The last, the last major From who? Revealed. From who? In the, in the hadith. Those ayat we're talking about. In the hadith? There's a hadith that says that that ayah is revealed after the ayah. We're talking again. Maybe your brain isn't. Maybe maybe it's a little. Maybe you're tired, right, from your traveling. So 9:29. The surahs. Okay. Let me let me explain it again. Let me explain it again. Surahs are not revealed in one chunk. That's the book. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me explain it again. Surahs are not revealed as chunks. Ayat are revealed. Which one of these ayat is revealed first? I said, I don't know. Okay. I will look it up. Okay. You said you do know. So I'm asking you, how do you know? Where did you read it? Um, I'll have to look it up. Okay, so look it up because you don't know then. Because you don't remember, you didn't know. If you're, okay. saying, if you're saying that was revealed before to like, book. Like I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna say this for the sixth time now. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. Right? I don't speak without knowledge. I don't just Google stuff and think I know. Right? So we would have to look that up. But the hukam that when somebody inclines towards peace, you do as well. You see this implemented in the life of the Prophet even in the later stages. You see the Khulafa, the Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, عنهم, making contracts, making deals. You have the Abbasiyah and Amawiyah. You go and read your history books, right? You see them making alliances with non-Muslims. So you understanding the context should have understood that no doubt the hukam that if somebody inclines toward peace, you do as well, is applicable. But you didn't know that. And you don't want to know that. Because the scholars I read Which said scholars? it doesn't work. Abu you don't know. Abu Humaid. Abu Humaid didn't talk about these ayat, bro. You're putting that into somebody's mouth. He, talk, he, he was talking about, about a general. And subjugate was he talking the about these ayat? These are the final revelations. Uh, he was talking about these ayat in Tawban and Fal? He was not. 973, 9123, yeah. Those, those were the two ayat he's talking about. You're lying on Abu Hamid. Bring the book next time. Okay. We'll look at it. You can look it up. If you, if you, if you have uh, the Jerusalem uh, edition of I have Bari, it. Uh, I have it at home. Yeah, yeah. Go, just, okay. go, just go to the end. He's got this okay. whole thing on jihad. Okay, I'll bring it and with me. Understanding it in context. It's I'll bring it with me context. next time. Cool. And we can look at it together. Yeah, How's that? See if it's right. Cool. That works. Maybe you will become Muslim. No, maybe we can. <laughs> maybe one maybe day we can actually get to this. <laughs> Look, bro, you, Look at you, this thing listen. getting all raggedy. I know, man. Because I carry it out here 50 times. Right? And still can't find what this is. I, you, I already grabbed the new listen, one. I listen, grabbed the new listen, one. Listen, 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 listen. You came here. You brought up a subject. I humored you. Right? And I went with you. Don't try to act like I didn't. You if, did. if you had come here no. and you didn't bring up Jazia and you brought this up, I would have addressed this. Not a problem. Right? When you come... And you bring up a subject. I didn't bring that up. You said you wanted to talk about Jizya. Oh, bro. Now you are on camera. You showed you, me a tweet. I, I asked you that because right. people keep sending it to exactly. me. Exactly. I asked you. So, that was it. so you that was brought. It. So who brought that up? You did. I did. You answered. And we're then done. I said. We were done. I said. Watch the video when you go home. I said, "Do you want me to explain it to you?" And you said, "Yes." Did not know and that, that Jizya would be a two-hour conversation. Well, that's your lack of understanding, bro. These are these are these are deep subjects. We teach whole classes on them. It's too bad the Quran just couldn't be clear the first time. The Quran is as clear as it gets. It's too bad you're too ignorant to understand it. As clear as it gets. Let me let me so let me say this to you again, once That's again, once again, once again. I never said all the scholars got it wrong. I never said they come to me. I said go to the people of knowledge, and they've just had some issue know, trying to, to understand it. No problem, come to me. That's what I did. So when I explained to you then, mm -hmm. instead of understanding, you just wanted to debate. 
To be honest, right? When right. I explain, you if I explain that I to you, that, that seems false. Hmm? It seems it sure. doesn't seem to fit with the Quran or the Hadith I, or Ibn Kathir. When I gave you, when I gave you I'm other, to, when I'm I gave you other, when, when I gave you other ayat, on, other not, Ahadith, we're not, right? We're not your dummies, dude. We don't just sit here and <laughs> give information. We just sit there. Yes, right, whatever right, you right. say. Okay, right, right. okay. Don't hit gotcha, me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, listen. Listen, I'm not your slave from the Bible either where you're going to hit me with a rod and try to kill me and I'm not your dad so don't don't well, go there, right? Let me let me let me take let me let me take it back. Look, listen. When I when I my prophet did not say believe in beating your slaves. You're lying on your my prophet, prophet affirmed, as you have said. Your prophet in fact, in fact, you, no, 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 no. Your your God, Surah 5 verse 43, the Jews 530. You're half Quran, an hour past the my The Jews time. come to Muhammad to settle Ali the dispute and Allah says, "Why do they come to you when they have the Torah?" They're Excellent. required to judge by the Torah. If anyone fails to judge by what Allah has revealed, they're no better than those who rebel. Right. You go to the historical background from that verse. Muhammad is set up as the judge. He says, bring me the Torah. They bring him the Torah. He puts it on the judgment cushion, says, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. He's talking Excellent. to the Torah. And Ibn Asak, the Jews come to him and they say, do you really believe in this Torah that we have with us? He says, yes, I do, but you've broken your covenant. Over and over again, he affirms the inspiration, preservation, and let me, authority let me go of back. the Torah okay. in the possession of the Jews. According to the Quran, Jesus, according to the Quran, Jesus affirmed the Torah that he had between his hands. So everyone's affirming the Torah, and somehow we don't believe in that Torah. Let me explain. Even it. though all your source, all your books here are go quoting ahead. the Torah. Are you are you done? Your tracks are. Are you done? So Allah says, are you done? The Torah. Are you done? You see this? He doesn't want me to Muhammad speak because he knows, right? When Allah says in the same surah earlier, this is the problem with context that you don't worry about, right? Is that those are people also that wrote things with their own hands and attributed to Allah. Same surah? Let me let me finish. Same, same surah? surah. Same surah. Which surah? Bring it. Uh, I just explained it to your other little Christian friend. Uh, uh, I should have brought. I quoted uh, 543. Excellent. I quoted 543. Same surah. I got you, bro. Relax. They wrote it with their uh, own hands. Yeah. Let me use a better translation. I hate the uh, Yusuf Ali's translation. Give me the... What happened to the Quran that was sitting here? While he's looking that up, since it's going to take a second, and he's not going to find it. <laughs> All right, hold on. You're looking for Surah 279, but that's a different, hold on. That's a different, different chapter. So 543, Jews come to Muhammad to settle the dispute. Allah says, why are they coming to you when they have the Torah? So apparently the Torah is the judge that they're commanded to judge by. A few verses later, Christians are told to judge by the gospel. People of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. Next verse, Muslims are commanded to judge by the Quran. So you get this different perspective that diff the different groups have their different revelations and they have to judge by them because all those revelations are from God. But eventually some Muslims started looking into <laughs> the Torah and the gospel realizing, wait a minute, all these scriptures that were affirmed as the word of God by Allah and Muhammad the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, still authoritative, um, they don't line up with the Quran at all. Oh, oh, David Wood. What's that? Surah 5, verse 41. Today, this is the end of David Wood. O oh, Messenger, let not those who hurry to fail into disbelief grieve you. Of such who say we believe with their mouths, but their hearts have no faith. And of the Jews are men who listen much eagerly to lies and listen to those who have come before you. And they change the words from their places. Same surah. Same surah. They No, no. Same surah. Now, yes, they change the words of God from their places. Whoa, 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 and they're given to take this, but they have not become beware. Whoever Allah That's wants to put said. in fitna, this is the ayah in the same. Surah okay. before no no hold look, on look, look. hold on hold on hold on Dave this shows you've they, got no hold on you got, got caught you got caught your career ended now your career ended now hold on you got caught you got caught your career ended now your career ended now let me just read let me just read you know it let me just read let me just read let me read okay right here when we talk about those Jews that changed their scripture then say this, this is this scripture. is they took those those words out of their place while they're speaking, this is changing while speaking, no 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 who are taken who are given right 
So listen to others who have not come. They have changed the words. Which words are these? They changed the words of what was revealed to them from their places. Hold on. And say that if you were given this, take it. But if you are not given this, beware. And whoever Allah wants to put into a fitna and error, you cannot do nothing to, against them. Those are the ones whose hearts have not been purified. Now this ayah that shows that they changed the words is before the, the ayah. Yeah, the yeah, 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 they changed the words yeah. in the hold text. On, hold on, because hold on, there are, hold there are on. There are two ways to change the words, right? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because look, we read Surah 3 verse 78. There is among them there is among them a section who distort the book with their sure. tongues. Exactly. As exactly. They read, you would think exactly. It's part of the book. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So those, the yes, they yes, 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 yes. Their books. Yes, because Whoa, then, let me, let me. There, there, there are Muslims who, 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 who let, let me, let me finish. Let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm saying. Are there Let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish, okay. right? You've already, you've here, the Quran here, no, I have not. Yes, you did. I have 100%. not. 100%. Hold on, hold on. When you see those that change the words, uh -huh. and Allah is warning you about them before those ayat, from right? Their and from their How places. Can they change them if they don't hold on, have them? hold on, hold on, hold on. They have, and they have changed them, right? So this is where you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned about this before we go forward in the same. When I told you in the nope. same surah, and I found it for you, now wait. If you look at the hadith, hold on, hold on, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done. If you look at the hadith that you quoted from a Tirmidhi, without even knowing that it's from a Tirmidhi, where Rasulullah got off and put the, the, the in Torah on the on the, the pillow, right? He did not. <laughs> this keen is going to go home and find it that it's not in Abu Dawood, but it's okay. It go, is in Abu Dawood. Look, okay, we'll go. Abu Dawood okay, find it to me. Okay. Abu Dawood surah. <laughs> what surah? Sheikh Uthman. Sheikh Uthman okay, is saying this is not in Sunan Abu Dawood. Right? Let, me, let me explain the hadith to you if you don't mind, right? Okay. The hadith where Rasulullah put the, the Torah on the, on the pillow, he said, I believe in the one who sent that, no doubt. But if you look at the context of the hadith, when Umar ibn Khattab found a piece of the Torah, Rasulullah told him that this is not going to be a means of guidance. Even if Musa came today, he would have to rule by the Quran. This is why you don't understand context of the hadith and other hadith. You take one out of context. No doubt the Torah, the Injil were revealed by Allah. And as I've continued to no doubt aspects of that message. But Rasulullah was told in the Quran that these people have changed parts of the book. No. They have. No, they change it with their mouths. Yeah, when when they speak, uh -huh. when they and, and in the Quran is also the other ayah that you know that they write and say they in their writing that which is not from Allah and attributed uh -huh. to Allah. And is how, that not true? And you're saying this would corrupt all of the books. This is gonna corrupt those books that they had, no doubt. Those now, so in, in, in now let me let me explain this, right? The Quran, the difference, the Quran and why Alhamdulillah Allah preserved it is we have manuscripts, mm -hmm. we have oral memorization, we have ijma consensus of the Sahaba on the Quran from Surah Al Fatiha, Surah Al Nas. Right, something you don't have in the Bible. Many Christians have different books that they would put Your in there or not. Right? Again, you misunderstand no, no, no. the affirmation, and why I've would, explained it to he, you why already. Would, why would he say? Why uh, would Allah say? It, it's 5:30. No, why bro. would Allah say? Why do they need you? Just because you got nothing better to do doesn't mean that I don't have a family and I don't have a job and things I'm to just do. Saying, why right? would Allah I've say? been here half an hour because it's not my job. You're just trying to make your money. I gotta go yeah, do other things. All right. Some impure yeah. motive. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. I was done. Up, while you're while, while you're while you're breaking down. All right. Why yeah. would Allah yeah. tell them? Why would Allah tell them? Hayakum Allah. Hayakum Allah. Hayakum Allah. Hayakum Allah. Hayakum Allah. May Allah increase you in goodness. Why would Allah tell them? Why would Allah say? Why do they come to you when they have the Torah? Sure. If it's corrupt. Sure. Let me let me can I can I explain it now? You see you see you see that you see now he doesn't want to explain listen to explanation right. This is a style in tafsir called tawbikh. Do you know what tawbikh is? No, what's that? You don't, because you're ignorant. Now, tawbikh is when you are told something to teach you a lesson, which is not a literal meaning, right? The point there was not that the Jews should not come to the Prophet ﷺ, but they would come to the Prophet ﷺ when it was beneficial for them, and when not, they would go back to the Torah. So they were being told, you paying attention, bro? Nobody says that. Yeah. That, <laughs> again, they need you that, when they so, have the Torah? So, so they have Tawbiq, do you not understand ulum of Quran? You don't, and that's the problem. When the Prophet was there, did he not tell them that if you want to rule today, you have to rule by the Quran. Even if Musa came, he would rule by the Quran. Did he not tell them that? 
Tim, you're telling me you contradicted himself. Thank you. And it's not. Or it's not. Choose, it's not a contradiction. Listen, listen. Let, listen, listen, let me let me let me explain this to you, okay? If you if you as David Wood mm -hmm. say that I'm a liar and I'm this and I'm that, you make all these videos and then you and you have an issue with your wife, for example, you come to me and say, Hey, you're the most trustworthy guy I know. Can you judge between us? And I tell you, why are you coming to me? Why don't you go to Sam and your friends? I don't mean that you should go to them. I'm trying so to mean, teach her. He didn't actually mean it. No, it's Tawbiq. What about an you know what when, mean? when they say, yeah. are you affirming the, okay. the Torah that we have? And he says, sure. yes. Bring me the Ibn Ishaq. Because Ibn Ishaq, as you are well aware, has many riwayats from our waqadi that are matruk, right? Oh, so you didn't know that either. No, if you want to but, throw Ibn Ishaq under the bus, uh, oh, too. <laughs> listen, what listen, about, listen. What about, about intermity when, when Muhammad said that Jews have the Torah and Christians have the... What was revealed was, to them? Was in the same... What was revealed to them? It has to be. Thank you. No, no, no. What is there or what was revealed to them? Show me the hadith. It has to be. Show me the hadith. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. And your hand's not tired, bro? You should get a stand next time. Oh. Okay, so... Oh, is that a text message? <laughs> it's a text message from myself, from David oh, Wood. I text gotcha. You text yourself. Because I can't, I can't have all the sources. All right. Rafi bin Haratha, blah, blah, blah. Can, can I see? Can I see? Said, Do can you I, not allege? I? I'm worried that my oh, okay. wife's going to send me some perverted message. Whoa, your wife sends you perverted me messages. Or something like that. And then... Put on a nighty again? <laughs> Go ahead. He put a shawl on. It wasn't a nighty. You're so ignorant, you don't even know said, that. Do you not allege that you follow the religion of Abraham and believe in the Torah, which we have, and testify that it is the truth from God? He replied, certainly, you, but you have sinned and broken the covenant contained exactly. therein and concealed what you were ordered to make plain to men. Notice. Concealed that's from the book. Exactly, Change the verses. Concealed. He doesn't. What do you conceal? You broke, you broke, okay, what do you conceal let's then? Go, let's, go, let's go to the he just, he just, okay, Hold on, hold on. You want to run now. You see, you want to run. No. That Rasulullah sallam is telling them, you have concealed from no. this book. No, no, no. You're wrong, caught. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You are caught from if your you own little text that means, message that you look, sent look, look, to yourself. Watch. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you, when, when I tell you, if you come to me and I say you have concealed from this message, do I mean that you have the preserved message? No. So if ISIS jihadis yeah. come up right. and they say, here's what the Quran says, sure. and it's not, then, then they've corrupted then the text. I will, then I, no, the text. no, then I will tell them you don't understand the text. But if they go, if they go and they change the Quran, which they have not, but if they went and changed it, then I would say you're concealing the message, and I would not believe in what they have. And if they quoted, right, bro, if they quoted passages and listen, changed right. the order you, you, in order I've to... Destroyed I've you like repeatedly, like you I feel, I feel bad for you. You're, you're, you're People can watch the video. People can watch the video, bro. The but it's a little late. I got, I got a family. You got, you got nothing to do in Keep San Diego mind. apparently. So. So if I write, this is the Quran. Right. I corrupted the Quran, right? No. You, if someone said, listen, listen, listen. Your listen, interpretation listen, of 279 listen, is listen, they write the book and claim listen, it's from God. Listen. Is that when, the, listen, the Torah has been corrupted? Listen. Let me explain it. And this is the last thing I'm going to explain. I'm done, right? And, uh, okay. Just, just, just to add oh, to that. Oh, this just, guy, okay. man. So I just read some. Miss I just read a couple words. In gulps will he sip it. And I'm talking to, let's say I'm talking to an Go illiterate ahead. audience, mm -hmm. and they don't know, they can't read it for themselves. And I say, it says, will he sip it in gulps? I changed the word order, right? I changed, I changed it. According Finish to what you, you're that's saying. what the Quran said. It's, Finish what you you're saying. You write something and you say it's a book, your book's been corrupted. Finish or what you're if saying. You change some words. You change some words for other places, which I just did with the Quran. Sure. Then the book has been corrupted. Let me. So can I answer? To the criteria you gave for a corrupt book, the Quran is 100% corrupt. Wrong. Again. It's not wrong. Let me explain it. That's what you let said. Let me explain it. Now listen. Open the ears. Close the mouth. All right. So. When we look at the Quran, you writing on a piece of paper does not affect the Quran. That is David Wood's stupidity to think that's going to affect the Quran. Hey, Jesus, we have, we have, I see, again, you see, you see this? You see this? You see he's not letting me speak? Let, let your audience see a that he won't let right me speak. I listen to him. That's not in the Torah. I listen the Torah. to him. I listen to him. I listen to him, but he won't let me speak because he knows he's done. Let your audience see it. Let your people see it. Let your audience see it. Say you're rushed. Right. Your point. Yeah. So let, you can't, you're bringing it up. Now let me finish. When you write on a piece of paper, that doesn't affect the Quran because standing amongst us are those that have memorized the entire Quran. We have manuscripts. We have the original text. Your writings today can't affect the That's Quran the at all. Text? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Let me speak. Let me speak. Let me speak. We have texts that we can carbon date to the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the time of Uthman Radiyanu, Uthmani scripts. Alhamdulillah, we have it. And we have videos on it you can watch if you want to educate yourself. Now, 
What the difference is that if you are the people who preserve the Quran and you go in there and you write in ayat that are not from Allah, then the Quran would be corrupted. But Alhamdulillah, that cannot happen. No, what, as it that, did happen, that, that, that as that it corrupt. did happen in the Torah and the Injil, that the people went and added and subtracted, and it that's why when you look at, when you look at. When, let me speak. You see, this? you see this? Allah you see this? Do you see this? Do you see this? It you see it? You see it? You see it? And their hands. That means text. That's what Allah is saying. Text. He doesn't know the word yad means. A Muslim changes What does yad mean? What does yad mean? Thank you. What does it mean? Yad means hands. But the pen. Where? Yad. In which verse? That's what it means. In which verse? In in. In any, uh, any, any context. In 541? You're quoting 541? Hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Are you going to Surah 279? I am. Oh, my goodness. Of course. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Now. Are we going to look at the commentaries? <sighs> no one hold agrees on. with you. Hold on. I appreciate, but, but, I appreciate but, but nobody agrees with me. What do they know? I'm just going to show you something. Come here, uh, Muawiyah, come here. <laughs> this is the last point I'm making. I'm out. Okay, read this word yes, in Arabic. We know it's hand read the words. In 279, that's I, not talking I about him. changing. I him. I him. With their hand done. We